is the music? I feel like it's a little on the loud side. Uh, all my settings got reset, of course, from transferring over. That would have been the other thing I would like to grab. I think we're going to drop the music volume down to about 50% and see how that goes. Can Kuman be the camel? I don't know if we can name. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Oh, we can. Camel Man Nacho. There we go. Wait, it didn't take. Oh. There it is. Stray Camel Man Nacho. Beauteous. Beauteous. Okay. Now we're probably going to slaughter it. <laughs> oh. All right, let's um, let me show you the landscape here. So people who have been in Discord have already seen this in some of our discussion about it, but I have I have great plans for this area. Now, to be clear down here, it's not water or anything. It's just the haze. We are on a uh, quite a aggressive slope over here. So as we go down, 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 you can see over here we do have a bit of a flat area and then it goes down a wee bit more. Uh, but yeah, we have embarked and arrived on quite the cliffside here. Now, if we continue to go up and move up to the northwest corner, you can see once again, I've decided to embark on a volcano because we didn't I didn't feel like we got our satisfaction from last time because our save got lost from the volcano. So I want to do another volcano embark. And this one is quite cool because we actually have sort of like a second hill right next to it. Um, and as soon as I said again that we we're posting you know, doing a volcano, people started about talking about like uh, on Discord. Oh, you do like bridges, you know, and things like that. And it's like, yes, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So um, I'm going to post a link to a tweet I did earlier that shows a picture of the plan that we were discussing. So that picture over there will give you a way bit of an idea of what I'm hoping to do with the entrance. Um, of this volcano. I don't want a regular entrance anywhere. Uh, I want it to all be like, uh, a, I think a pair of bridges actually. Um, a bridge over the volcano, some stairs down, go down a little bit more, another bridge this way. We'll set them up to be like retractable and we'll set up whole systems um, to uh, defend. And yeah, I can't believe you don't have 100k channel points, cool man. You've been here for a million billion years. DF Noob, can traders get up the cliffside of the trading post set up there? Or do you need to build a closer to ground level? So that's a great question, Azzarello. Um, I actually, so one thing is I don't know exactly what the logic is for where a trader will spawn. Um, I believe, assuming that your trading post can be reached somehow. So first of all, traders can can always like walk up whatever. The big question is mostly the trade wagon. We want traders to arrive with a trade wagon because that way they bring more goods and they can bring more goods back with them because of weight limitations and stuff like that. And for that, what it needs is a three tile wide walkable path. I think they are perfectly fine going up and down slopes, assuming that there's at least a, you know, three tile wide um, spot on the slope that they continue to use over and over. Um, I think though, again, I think if we put a trading post here, if we removed all these other ramps, I think traders might explicitly spawn here. I think they might detect what area is reachable and do that. I'm not certain about that, though, unfortunately. I don't know that for sure. I'm hoping, so my thought is, um, we're, so we're going to be able to pre-base on this hill over here, right? We got our volcano over here, but I'm going to set up the pre-base an initial little mini fortress over here um, that is going to be completely isolated from what's eventually going to be our main base. Uh, later on this pre-base, I mean, it's still going to be the area where we accept traders. Um, we could use it as a migrant quarantine if we're worried about were creatures. Uh, we could also we could decide to build the inn here, for example, although we might not want to put too many things over here since it will be kind of far from a primary base. And there's going to be some more um, some more walking time to do that. Um, obviously, we're going to have to build bring trade goods to the trade depot. Now, I'm not too worried about that because all of our amazing gem encrusted mugs that obviously we're going to be making as part of our economy, because that's what we do. Um, it's just going to be a few bins, so it's going to be quite easy for us to just bring them over for traders. The bigger question mark is all the stuff we buy from traders, uh, having to bring all that down to the base might be annoying. So what I was thinking is where we build a trading post, and I might build it underground here, um, is I'm going to have a shaft right next to the trading post designated as a dumping zone. And then when we complete the trade, I'm going to designate all the stuff we purchased to be dumped by our dwarves. They're just going to grab it and fling it down the shaft. 
and then the shaft will, you know, however deep it needs to be to reach our main base, all the goods will just get dropped down there without having to walk a whole bunch. Um, and then afterwards, uh, we'll have to unforbid all the stuff that gets dumped down there. But that will allow us to get the stuff from the trade depot much, much, much faster. So that's the plan. Will it work? I don't know. We'll see. But that's that's the plan. I mean, we could do it with, uh, with mining carts and stuff, too. But um, and we might we might add that later. But for now, I think the shaft is going to work perfectly good. So I think that's going to be that's going to be groovy. Can we bet how many dwarves will fall down? Well, that's that's the other thing. Uh, what goods are fragile is an excellent question. I don't think I don't I don't know. We might find out. I don't think goods in Dwarf Fortress take falling damage. Like if we buy anything made out of glass, does it does it break? I don't think so. Living creatures take falling damage, but I don't know if goods do. But, 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 I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah. What happens if we buy animals in cages? Can they get dumped down the shaft? What does that do? Ooh. Ooh. Now I'm a little concerned. Anyway, we'll find out. That's going to be a problem for later Quill 18. Um, so, yeah, so the top of this is basically elevation 72. I mean, there's a little bit more in 73, but 72 is kind of the, the top over here. And Z level 68 is where I was thinking I was going to build a bridge from our little like entrance fortress or pre fortress across over here and probably all the way across to the other side here, where then what we'll do is we'll build some stairs that go down. Uh, 62 is where the magma actually is, or the lava in this case, uh, as it's listed, um, on 62. So probably what I'll do on like Z level 64 is we'll cut back across again over here. So there's gonna be one stair, one, um, one bridge that goes across from the pre-fortress westwards, down some stairs, and then an eastward bridge that will actually then uh, connect to the actual fortress, like, and we'll dig down a few Z levels. Um, we'll definitely be doing the uh, magma extraction again for our magma forges. Um, I, we should be able to do it a little bit safer this time and not lose someone. I mean, we'll find out what could possibly go wrong, right? Exactly. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get ourselves started with the plant. Now, I we could put the um, the trade depot on the surface, but I don't want to. So I want to be able to have the trade depot down. Let's assume we're going to construct everything on floor 68. Maybe we'll have some things slightly above and slightly below in our pre fortress, but let's assume most of it's going to be on floor 68. So the way I want to get to this is I want to build a ramp from the surface because uh, uh, trade caravan with their wagons. They can't use stairs, but they can use ramps. So that's going to be the plan. So we're going to go up to level 72 over here. And my intention here is to dig a channel, which will leave a ramp. And I'm going to do a three tile wide channel, which is going to be enough for the wagon. Uh, note, if at any point the wagon needs to turn around, it will need a little bit more space. I think you need to leave a three by three area to give it an ability to turn around. But I think we can probably plan sort of a linear thing. So if I go and just do this, and then go down one level. Actually, I should, yeah, I should do this with the uh, keyboard cursor because it'll be much easier to not lose track of where I am. So yeah, we've done that. We're gonna go down one level. Boom. Go down another level. Down another. And then we get down to floor 68. Oops. And then I hit the wrong key, which is not what I wanted. Okay, we're right over here. Uh, I wanna switch, I was trying to switch from like the ramp digging to like regular mining and go down over here. And so I'm just going to carve out a three by three area uh, for the landing. Then we'll have we know these three tiles right over here. Oops. These three tiles right over here will be the down ramp. So we can't kind of dig around that. But then afterwards, yeah, we can probably just uh, actually I'll have it come right into a trade depot. That's what we're going to do. I think what I'll do. Because it's a border around it. And maybe, ugh. My god. I don't know, I, I haven't played the uh, classic version in ages, and yet my, uh... My muscle memory for the hotkeys is still for the other one, especially for these digging tasks. Let me pull back a little here. 
Something like that. So we can put the Trade Depot in the middle of this and then we'll figure out what else we're doing here. And then, yeah, I think the plan is probably lined up around here. Although... There we go. Something like that. I won't connect it, though, because I don't want to start digging. But then from here, we can we can bridge across over here. Think that's going to be the idea. I think I'm, I think I'm good with this. Yeah. Now, uh, if we unpause, there you go. Digging should begin. Uh, so our starting dwarves, we have Merlin of Chaos, who's, um, I just used the uh, the default um, embark things. I didn't actually do any customization whatsoever. So Merlin of Chaos is, so all of our starting dwarves have the founder um, occupation, plus something else that shows their job. So we got the founder miner, Pepito Jones, our founder woodworker, Bedinsis is our former, our founder mason, Agrathon is our founder metal crafter, just sort of generically set the metal crafting for now. We can specialize them later. Caven here, the default embark starts you off with someone with fishing skills, so that's what Caven has, um, but I don't think we're going to do fishing. So just, I just have founder for now. When we decide what we're going to specialize Caven in, we'll, uh, we'll add a little tag over there. Cyber Dude SDK is our founder planter, our farmer, founder farmer. And Lord Gravewish is our founder leader. Uh, so they have like the social skills and things like that. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, so yeah, hopefully we can do a really cool um, base here. So I did uh, assign uh, mining to a second dwarf because we did start with two picks. So I think uh, Lord Gravewish is the other person who's doing some mining. Struck some amethyst immediately. That's great. So assuming I haven't mucked this up, this should be a very nice ramp for bringing our, uh, the trade caravans in, which is good, because we're gonna wanna reserve some space for that. That's gonna be okay. After that, we're gonna wanna carve out some various rooms um, just for miscellaneous use for now. Uh, again, long-term, what are we gonna do here? But having a person called cave in while digging into mountains is definitely fishy. God damn it, Fotino. God damn it, Fotino. Founder leader, but is he also the expedition leader? Imagine the drama if not. Uh, he is the ex uh, expedition leader. Lord Gravewish over here. Um, I believe he's also going to act as our... Let me just check here. Oh, you don't actually have appraiser, which is interesting. Oh, it's interesting how the uh, social skills were actually spread out a bit. Oh, no, hold on. We don't need a messenger. Uh, manager. There we go. We'll give that to you. And then we have no one with medical skills currently, but... We'll see how that all shakes out. Okay. Cool emotes, not show. The ca the tavern should be known the call named the Cave Inn for sure. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, okay, people keep asking about the uh, camel gender, or person keeps asking about the camel gender. Uh, I guess we can just find you in here. Boop, 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 boop. Cool man nacho, or cool camel man nacho is male. There you are. For those who need to know. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set some other hotkeys. Although this might become our F1 hotkey. Yeah, I think so. So I'm actually going to go, uh, no, I forgot Q is squad. Not, no, not the query button that it used to be. Um, I want to select the wagon. I want to tell it to remove this wagon so that eventually this gets cleaned up because we're not going to want it. Let's go back to floor 68 over here and sort of center. Center around something like this. And let's set this as the new location for F1. Uh, and this is going to be called. I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep calling it pre-fort for now. I mean, what it's going to be, it's going to be the welcome fort. It's going to be the entry fort. Right now, it's pre-fort because we're just using it as our starter little thing. A tour of the volcano would really mag my day. Oh, map staring. So, I mean, here's the volcano. I mean, there's not much to tour of right now, right? But yeah, I do like that we've got, like, the second hill over here. By the way, our fortress is called Notched Ink which Notch Dink was pretty good, but I really like the Dwarven name, Lesat Lakot. It sounds really good. Uh, in terms of our civilization as well, if we center on the fort, our civilization is another great name, the Tempted Chamber. 
I think, Jesus Christ. I actually have tears in my eyes right now. That scared me so bad. I don't know why. I just, I think it's because it's so sudden. There's no build up to the first note. Holy crap! I mean, sorry, did that say sushi? Oh, yeah, baby! Let you read, thank you. Wow. Oh, gonna have a heart attack one day. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, the Tempted Chamber and the Cobalt Fountain is our site government name. All pretty good names. And um, I realized after, because I wanted to do the default embark because I didn't want to have to go through and assign um, all the jobs the same way. Uh, and then after I did it, I was like, oh, I forgot it doesn't let me name my fortress and civilization. Or when you don't need my civilization, you pick your civilization. But then when we got in here and I looked at the names, like, no, these are all good. I like them all. Yeah, they're, they're all really good. Whoo-wee. <laughs> Not having heart attacks. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy Ascension's here to keep an eye on the timer. Thank you very much. And yeah, Fletcher Reed. Ooh, baby. I haven't had sushi in ages. And it's one of the things I have a permanent craving for. Oh, you changed your Twitch name. Should be easier than uh, Leandro Pitu. Bookworm Leo. Oh, Bookworm Leo is a good name. I mean, your other name was probably also fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Essentially keep an eye on your cardiovascular health. Yeah. All right, so diggy diggy hole. Let's um, let's go and pick some plants with the dwarves who are a little bit more idle. Um, just because we might need some early things. Actually, one of the things I don't know is if we've got farmable terrain. I don't know if we've got sand available on this map. But I'm going to put a little uh, plant gathering command on this flat area over here and also chopped in trees. Um, the tree thing's going to be interesting. I mean, at some point we'll breach the cavern, so it'll be less of an issue. Yeah, let me do a little bit of that. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to make sure, because mining is going to be very important right now, I'm going to set our two miner. Maybe I should just make Kevin, Kevin, our, one, our other miner. I don't know. I did give him another job. Oh, yeah, right now he's on cook brew duty, which, I mean, there's nothing to do right now, but it will be useful. I'm going to tell the two miners that they're only doing mining right now. I don't want them to go off and start picking plants. I want them to focus on the mining and carving some stuff out uh, immediately. That's going to be really good. Um, what I'll probably do is carve out a large area over here, which is going to serve as a stockpile early on, but then we can repurpose it as our inn and tavern afterwards. Steel Racer, thanks for the resub and quirky plugs. Thanks for subbing. Welcome. Join the uh, Discord if you've got Discord. Or, you know, if you want to. But it's fun, so you should. Um, let's figure uh, something like this. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to continue. Make it kind of roundish like this, and then... There you go. Sometimes I like setting up double doors, but in this case, we can set up some single doors over here. So yeah, that's going to make for a great tavern afterwards. Um, and then what we can do is we can put some uh, some little bedrooms off of this uh, to rent later on. Um, but for now, we don't need that. Um, I'll make another area over here to serve as a barracks and initial set of workstations. I don't know what this will be repurposed to. Maybe some sort of guild hall, a guild hall that's open to the public later on. <clears throat> So yeah, we can put a fair number of workshops in this, and then um, I don't want it to go too close to the edge of the map because there's a limit to buildability here. But yeah, we can use this as a bit of a of an early dormitory. And that's gonna be okay. Plants use ballistas in this run. Well, we could. What's interesting is with our bridges, we could line up some ballistas on that. Or maybe in this hallway. So this area here, we're going to treat as like potentially semi expendable. I don't know. What we could do is we could have a bridge that can seal the top of this should things happen. But part of me is kind of OK with the idea of letting enemies attempt to walk into the main base over here and then we just pull back the drawbridge. But yeah, maybe the um, we could have a, a retractable bridge here and at the other side. Of, uh, of this so that the pre-fort can be isolated its own little thing. 
And then, yeah, we retract these bridges here, which will isolate the, the real fort, the main fort. Yeah, I think I might, I might like that kind of thing. You ever done a fort on the edge of the map like this? Not really. Now, one of the things is when we get, when we do our main fort, I think we're going to try to center it a little bit more. Oh, I haven't actually checked what the wildlife on this map is. So we know about magma crabs. They live in the volcano. Wild boars and wombats. Well, I'm happy we haven't seen any echidna yet. Still having a little bit of, uh, a little bit of anxiety left over from when we dealt with the unkillable undead echidna from previously. Um, let me make a little change here. Let's do a, let's change the priority of digging out our stockpile. Because our other dwarves can be told to start bringing things over here. Enter from the sides, cross towards the center. Yeah, something, yeah. You have Fluxstone on the map this time. So the world map did in indicate that we did have Fluxstone on the map this time. I'm, I'm wondering if it's because the volcano sort of off in the corner and we might be crossing a biome boundary. There might be more than one bio uh, biomes on this map. Uh, unfortunately and annoyingly in the, the new version of Dwarf Fortress here with the UI, you can't you can't cycle through biomes on the embarkation map, at least that I could tell. So I can't tell if we're on multiple biomes, but that's what I'm wondering. But it did indicate that we have iron, plus some other metals, and flux stone. So, fingers crossed. Will the weird slopes on either side of the ramp stop the traders from using it? Um, I don't... I don't think so. Now, I do wish, so in the uh, old versions, you'd hit Shift-D to um, to get a an indicator on screen of everywhere the trade caravan, like the traders can reach and whether or not the wagon can reach it. I don't believe that exists in the current version. I'm sure that's something they're gonna bring back because it is a very useful indicator for things, but yeah. Found Volcano Fortress tank my FPS unless you turn off temperature calculations, the option. Yeah, we could we could consider that. Um, I know whenever you have any flowing liquid, it's also bad for FPS. Um, although in theory, once we fill our reservoir for our magma forges, I don't think we're going to have flow of magma. And on this map, we don't actually have any rivers or anything. Now, when we dig down to the cavern level, we will have access to water underground, which will be very important. We're going to have to kind of prioritize that, uh, perhaps more than usual um, uh, on this particular run. I'm going to just draw out a part of a stockpile over here, just to get started with things. And yeah, I'm going to set it to all and then just turn off um, corpses, and refuse and stone. We're, we're definitely going to tune this behavior. But just want to keep my, my dwarves a little bit busy. Our miners just stopped. They're probably going to get, grab a drink. Is there an aquifer? Not that I... I don't think so, actually. I don't think there's any aquifer whatsoever, which is unfortunate because it would be nice to get unlimited water to do with, like, um, waterfall things and stuff like that. I don't know if the underground um, lakes replenish themselves or how that works. You have an FPS overlay? Yeah, we can turn it on if you want. Might not be a terrible idea. I mean, right now, no matter, even on a, an older CPU, which my old CPU wasn't bad, um, we would have, um, we'd be fine at this point in the game. But it'll be interesting to see if things change. There you go, show frames per second. There you are. So, down over here. There's two numbers, because one is the, the graphical frames, and one is the... Um, the in-game frames, and yeah, I think the the settings somewhere in here. Is it this screen here? Graphical FPS cap is uh, is capped to 50. And I think under game is the gameplay cap to 100. There you go. Games frames per second cap defaults 100. So that's why we're seeing this. I mean, the, and you know, rounding down or whatever. So this means right now the game is running at full pin. So we'll see. Magma waterfalls work just as good as water ones. We could do some interesting magma based defense defenses. I would like to do more sort of like mega project y kind of stuff of some kind. I know what it is. Imagine creeps from Minecraft and Dwarf Fortress. Huh. Yeah, I don't want any explosive creatures in Dwarf Fortress. It's hard enough as is. Let's go and embiggen this. Obviously, our, uh, our stockpile packing is not going to be very efficient right now as a result of... Uh, what is this? This is Microcline. Oh, nice. 
I do like microcline. It's very it's not useful for anything. But it's blue. Therefore, you can you can because it's not important as a mineral, it means you can use it for purely cosmetic things. Time to start the mug making. It's going to be pretty quick. Bins as well. In fact, let's go. We've got a little bit of space here. Let's get a carpenter. Uh, yeah, microcline is fine. Uh, we'll get the craft warp. Sure. There we go. There's just enough room in there for it. And then we'll have to wait for a little bit more to get dug out. What's a silvery rock right over here? Yeah, native silver walls, which is great. We can start making our silver war hammers whenever we start to do some smelting. Oh, there we go. It's going to be enough room for another workshop now. Um, so forges can wait. Mechanic can wait. I don't think we need levers to build bridges, right? Only when we want to connect them. So yeah, we'll get a stone worker shop next. And if we take a look at people, dig, store, construct building. Okay, yep, all good. Microcline doors are pretty in this version. Okay. All right, Crafts Warp Workshop is up. Let's uh, let's start making mugs. You know, what? I'll do it as a global work order. We're gonna do some things like non-global, but I think we're gonna we're gonna end up all these workshops that are here are gonna end up getting smashed anyway. So, uh, rock mug, blunk. Um, we are going to. Uh, oh, I didn't want to send a material note. There we go. Um. We probably do. We just kind of want to do it forever. Yeah. Just try to make at least like 10 mugs a day if you can. And yeah, you can use any of the material currently available. We might set some restrictions later on. But yeah, we're putting no cap on the mugs. Just get it going. OK, Stoneworkers Workshop. Um, Let's set up a few orders ready to go. Um, rock doors. Rock. Oh, damn, I hate that it doesn't give you the. Mm. It really should focus on the text input. Rock thrones and rock blocks that we're going to want for various things. Do we make all these out of microcline? I mean, the blocks maybe we make out of whatever. We were doing a bunch of things with uh, Obsidian last time. Once we get over to the volcano side, we'll have access to it. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and make these work out of micro. And then I'll just do the rock blocks out of whatever. That's going to be fine. Uh, make like no more than a couple at a time. But try to maintain at least 10 of each of these so we can do some rapid construction. So if we have less than 10, start up a job to make two. And then the blocks, um, I don't know, keep like a couple hundred blocks around of whatever material. We can use those for constructing our bridges and walls and things like that. That's going to be handy. Oh, you think Shift D works? Let's find out. First of all, let's go ahead and uh, put down a trade depot immediately. I mean, we don't need it yet, but yeah, we're going to put it in there and just make it out of microcline. That's fine. And we'll see. <laughs> right now, me hitting shift G is, moves my thing just as if I'd hit D, but I can see why it might be responding to both. How come? What's our, con our carpenter doing? I mean, anyone can do it. The carpentry job is not limited to anyone. I guess Pepito is, yeah, still stockpiling. All right, fair. Fine. Okay, the digging job's almost over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the miners that they no longer have to do this exclusively. So that way they can help with, uh, with hauling and whatever. We will try to get people fairly specialized in this run. Maybe more than we have previously. Um, let's go and get... I still hate that this is called farming... We are going to get our very important uh, brewery up and running over here. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I guess I can get the tanner here. And then if I get a butcher's workshop set up, and I do like building the butcher's workshop in the service, we can start hunting these wild boars. So, yeah, we'll plan some construction. I love the stormy sounds. I'll plan for a butcher's workshop over here. And we're going to have to, um, yeah, build it on micro client. We're going to have to uh, do the thing where we uh, build a wall and a roof around it so it doesn't count as outdoors for the purpose of. Um, there you go. Um, for the purpose of uh, cleaning refuse and stuff like that. Oh, I guess I should probably get a refuse stockpile going as well. Let me uh, smooth over the rest of these little boulders over here. New labor system seems overall pretty decent, just too used to dwarf therapists. Yeah, it is actually pretty good. There's there's some things I still admit. Oh my god, did a wild boar kill a dog? Okay, wow. Wait, is someone injured? Give water. That's what happens when someone is injured. Is one of our dwarves? I guess it did say someone was fighting. It might have just... Yeah, hopefully only the dog. Another dog is fighting. Oh my gosh, okay. We're gonna have to seal ourselves in just to protect ourselves from wild boars, like, real quick. Alright, let's make a refuse stockpile out here. Um, I'll accept... Um, do we also want to accept corpses? They'll decay faster, but I think that's fine. I'll go refuse and corpses, turn it all on. So these corpses will any if, if something allows refuse, then the stuff in that stockpile is just internally set to decay a lot faster. I think this is probably fine, too. Boars aren't afraid of dwarves like a lot of animals are, and it can go berserk. Oh, man. OK. Huh. Well, let's get ourselves um, a boy's workshop so we can make some wooden crossbows ASAP. You know what? I will get an early mechanics workshop. So, mechanics workshop used to be bigger, right? Like 4x4 four four or 5x5? Five five? Or am I just thinking the siege workshop? Get us some mounts. War bears. Boars. I, I don't know what's involved in taming them. I think you trap them and then tame them? Wildlife in this map, so boring. Oh my god, that's terrible. Thanks for the bits! I think um, they're suspending construction as people like might be walking through this area. It actually might be slightly annoying to build uh, in the short term, but we'll see. Yeah, no one's gotten around to the carpentry yet, which is a little surprising. Um, let's set up a work order for rock mechanisms. And same thing, make a couple a day, but keep like 10. I mean, I don't think we'll ever need. Well, we might want to spam out some traps quite quickly. So, yeah, that might be OK. Uh, Boyer's workshop. So I think what's going to happen here is I'm going to do a one time. Ooh, one time ask for wooden crossbows, um, make 10 of them. It's going to be lots of everything. <sighs> Found. Found a new nightmare for Ascension. Alcoholic wear camel. Alcoholic wear camels drinks only rum that gives alcohol flavor camels bacon. <laughs> Man, <laughs> what do you get when your best cook also makes ranged weapons, but he's one level below C tier? Chef Boyardee. Boyardee. Oh my god. So if I hit Shift D, now I'm not getting the uh, I'm not getting the Trade Depot overlay. I wonder if there is a key binding for it. It's probably under Fortress. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe people can Google and, and confirm if it exists or not in this hey, version. Pay attention, there's a new subscriber. El Kingi, thanks for the sub. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Dwarf Therapist, last time I checked, isn't working for Dwarf Therapist, it, or for the new version. It it works a little. It doesn't do everything. And I have used it to, like, look at dwarves, but I think it's it's kind of read-only still right now. DF Hack also is working for this version, but only some tools and very beta and, yeah. Dwarf Therapist works completely now? Oh, for assigning labors? Last time I checked, it was still just in read-only mode. Again, still really useful for determining. And you could, you could set your squad, I think. So very useful for that. Um, so we may. I don't know if we'll need it today, because I don't think we're going to have that many dwarves to manage today. Okay, let's get our surface walled off over here um, and try to keep some of these bores out. So we're going to construct walls. Um, yeah, select after placement is fine. We're going to use microcline block. Oh, I don't have enough. Okay, never mind. I'm going to wait for more blocks to be made. I, I, I can, as I can, I can set up a couple other things that we will want later. Um, I'm going to want a fortification to vent out from it, so you can make out of microcline blocks. Um, I do need walls up to place a door, so I will place a couple of walls. So here. Keep seeing movement. It's my uh, my. I got an air filter running, air purifier running, and it's moving a strap from a bag. It's quite distracting. Uh, construction wall. I don't know why I closed out of that mode completely. Oh, because I don't have keep building after placement turned on. That would be why. Okay, we'll put up those two, and then we'll put a door over there, and then we'll we'll get some more things sort of surrounded and figure something out. Do 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 do. Oh, hey, Josh. Hmm, are you rid of those two hills on top? Maybe! I was wondering about that. Just leveling this off, area off? We may, we may in fact do exactly that. I suppose the easiest way to do it is probably to work from the top and just channel down. Yeah. Well, I may, I think when I get up, I'll move the strap. Okay, um, the still. So let's get, uh, let's get brewing. Brewing from fruits and plants. There we go. Um, yeah, up to 10 a day. I mean, we may need to update that number later, but it should be okay. If drinks are less than uh, 200, repeat. So we'll put that in for both. And we don't have an office for our manager yet, but that's okay. You don't need an office until you get to 200 dwarves. So those are going to be asked. We're also going to ask for... Uh, I'll just do wooden barrels. Although... Are rock pots, are rock pots equivalent to barrels or are they equivalent to bins? We have fewer than 10 empty barrels. Heck, if we have fewer than 20 empty barrels, make 10 barrels. Okay, pots are like barrels. What's the thing that's equivalent to bins but has a different name? Or do you just make metal bins? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. So we might end up making more like rock uh, barrels later, but we do have access to trees, so we'll do that. And then that, it keeps the carpenter busy, which is good. Oh, I should start on wooden bins as well. That's going to be really important. So yeah, make 10 a day. Again, if we have fewer than like 20, which is a big number, but uh, you know what? We do want a lot of bins. Pots equals barrels, but way more. Okay, so barrels are going to be better because the wood is lighter. Oh, and uh, although I still don't have. Man, um, I guess what I could do is I could gently encourage. Pepito Jones. Oh, he's chopping down trees, right? OK, um, I will limit him to just the jobs that he is assigned to. Uh, I did flag quite a few trees to be chopped, to be fair. So Pepito Jones might be busy doing that a little bit more than perhaps we should, but that's going to be OK. Just focus on that and then focus on your carpentry. Yeah. I'd be thinking of rock coffers and metal chests. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah, having different names. I guess bins are always just bins. They're either made out of metal or wood. Okay. Tanner shop is going to operate automatically. Um, same thing with our, our butcher. It's just going to happen automatically if people start doing some hunting. Oh, I should, I suppose, ask for wooden bolts to be made. Boom. 
uh, if we have fewer than, I don't know, 200, just arbitrarily picking a number over there, get started on that. Would be really cool if you could export and reload your manager work list. I think you could do that with DF hack, at least when you use DF hacks workflow. When does the first trader show up? So in autumn, uh, unless, unless we get one from one of the other races in summer, but I don't know if I've ever seen that in the first year. But we do get a Dwarven Trade Caravan every autumn. We don't know where the traders will spawn. Oh yeah, did anyone figure out the um, the Trade Caravan? If the button exists? I'm just scrolling back in chat a little bit. It's whiskey and chocolate! I don't see a note. Coding Wombat, hey, thank you very much! Why is a necromancer not always a bad guy? Sometimes they just want to raise a family in peace. <laughs> No hotkey that I can see for the trader. Yeah, that's a shame, because, like, yeah, the Shift-D hotkey is really important, especially with our particular placement here. Normally, we can take it for granted, but the animal I'm identifying as is wild boars. So we must tame those boars as a steady food source. Oh. War Fortress isn't a fortress unless we have rum and rye whiskey. Well, we'll work on it. We're going to get a booze industry for sure. Although, here's the thing. I was going to say, it's pretty rocky over here. So, I don't know what we can do for farming. Any chance down over on this flat area if we might have some soil? There is some sandy clay. It's pretty far from the front. Part of me is wondering if we don't get farming going until we hit a, a cavern level. Which is risky. Popping a cavern level is risky, although we could try to wall it in relatively quickly and see how that goes. If we had a water source, we could go and muddy up one of these sites. But I don't think we do. Again, until we keep digging deeply and greedily. What an interesting situation we're in. You're right, temporary surface farm. I always forget about that. Because, like, surface crops? Ew. But that is an excellent point. And weirdly, even though it feels like it should be the opposite, surface farms don't care about seasons. They grow their crops year round. Uh, what? Sure. That makes sense. Unless something has changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's too close. Hold on, cancel. Oh, this leaves like... Oh, it leaves the exposed soil. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Because I just realized we need some walls around this still, so that's not where I want that. So yeah, short term, we'll have to, we'll see about making do with our surface farms over here. So what's everyone busy doing? All right, we're still doing some storing. Pepito Jones is making some wooden barrels now. There we go. The Carpenter's Workshop is up. Oh, there we go. Summer is here. Doing my seasonal autosave. Again, I should, I could probably, I don't think we've had much in the way of crashing other than the one crash where the game just wouldn't continue ever again. Things have been pretty stable, so I'm wondering if I could back off the seasonal autosaves, but it feels like it's just asking for trouble. You know what I mean? Volcanoes bring up all the minerals, yeah. But yeah, the fact that we do have some soil over here does make me think we've got a couple of biomes, which is probably why we're going to have access to Fluxstone. Um, I am going to be building beds in a second. We, I, I just kept looking at the, the workers' workshop. And I had meant to, like, I, I could have set up the, the make beds immediately. But yeah, it's not like I'm specifically avoiding anything. I suppose I could have limited it to just seven, but we'll do that. I'm not going to put a repeat bed job on right now. I'll, pro I'll just let the, set the, the 10 go, and I'll just plop down all 10 beds over here, because we'll probably get a migrant wave relatively soon, too. I don't know when that the first one comes. But pretty quickly, I think. Oh, um, let me set up... We don't need a chair, a, like an office for the manager, but if we want a bookkeeper to start getting numbers uh, in place, we kind of want to get that going on. So I'll probably just... 
Boom, boom. And then... Boom, boom. We'll get them both set up over here. That's going to be okay. Middle of summer, we get a microwave. Okay, I was pretty sure. Stable save compression for extremely safe quicking. Oh, that's true. It would save a lot faster, but... We got a tune that started. Boy, that was short. So yeah, what I've done in the past, and what we might do again, is um, drop the in-game music and then just play the soundtrack from Spotify. So that we always have... One more. There you go. A little bit of background sound. Josh, I see you, but I'll talk to you later, okay? This is not the right time, man. I'm sorry. There might there is music that plays in the combat queue, but again, it I don't know. I mean, I guess if it suddenly kicks in, it would be a bit of a hint, but it's all right. I mean, at this point, it would be going off all the time because it's freaking bores. Let's see what we can do. Music games are very spotty, mostly silent. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, um, I, I would like. I thought they added something for the music frequency. I mean, there's this average seconds between tracks slash interludes. I guess if I just brought that down. Hold on. If I did this, then I guess in game it would be playing music all the time. That's because that option wasn't there originally, but now it is. I think that might be what we're looking for. Actually, I forgot that they did add something at a patch. So now there should be no more than a 10 second gap between songs. And yeah, if there's contextual stuff, that'll be good. So yeah, we'll probably do some boar hunting. Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're uh, we're getting our crossbows made. Let's take a look at the. Uh... OK, the job ended. Well, that's good. And crossbows. And then we're presumably making some bolts. So um, if we go and take a look at our hunters. What we could do is we could give everyone the hunting task that doesn't have a conflicting task because hunting conflicts with mining and woodworking because you need equipment. You need a pick or you need an axe or you need a crossbow. So we could do that or we could have someone specialize on it. But I'm actually kind of tempted to say something like anyone who's not a miner or the carpenter, you're gonna have to come on so that we will continuously sort of hunt down boars as they spawn. I kind of like that idea. Maybe it's crazy. Yeah. I kind of dig it. Boar hunting, don't drink too much wine beforehand. Oh, poor old Robbie B. Okay, um, our offices are up here. So if we go and yeah, don't show again. Thank you office zone so we'll do a little one by or one by two zone over there and another one here there we are so you are going to go to the all oh right i don't have my titles set properly uh or they're not auto set because i've overridden all the titles but yeah it's grave wish and cyber dude who need offices grave wish and cyber dude are now satisfied. OK, and then most of that means our bookkeeper can start giving us some accurate counts on our various values. And we'll see that's what that is. Bum, 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 bum. What metal is that? Which one right over here? Native silver. Uh, construct wall, select material, keep building afterwards. Here to here, and there we go. Microcline blocks. We still don't have a ton. Oops. I, think I was putting it in the wrong place there. Maybe it wasn't letting me uh, put it on top of the uh, stockpile anyway. 
and my climb blocks. Okay, and now these two walls that we put up earlier are in place. So we can go and put down a door right over here. And we'll build a ramp adjacent. It's actually already a wall there, so I can do that. I can construct a ramp. I'll just temporarily put it right there. We'll tear it down afterwards. But that will let us climb up onto these walls and work on a roof, seal all this in, and that's going to be great. Oh, I can hear Ascension moving around. I wonder if the sushi's here. Oh, ho, ho. Nallard, thank you. Thank you, Nallard. Resubbing 100 month with a really nice message. Thank you. If we do catch a boar now, we have to name it Hugh. Hugh. Boar Hugh. Hugh Boar. Hugh Bear? I don't get it. Sorry. Dang it. All right. So that's constructions happening. Uh, oh, there we go. We've got some people hunting. Bedinsis is out hunting. There we are. Now, I'm hoping the boars don't fight back. I don't think so. I think they're not scared of the dwarves, so they're not like naturally running away from them. But I don't know if hunting back or fighting back's a problem. Oh, Hugh of Borg. Oh, wow. Sorry, it's been a while since I've watched some TNG. It didn't come immediately to mind. Hey, I've been hearing that Picard uh, season three is pretty good. Is that true? Which is very exciting. I actually haven't ended up. I didn't watch Picard at all yet. I heard season one was good. Season two was less so. But three is like back with a vengeance. It was very exciting. Deep cut for that name. Yeah. OK, uh, presumably our, some of our beds are done. Well, let's get some, um, let's get a door for the barracks over here. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, and yeah, you can use closest material for this. I'll just drop down some random door. These doors don't really have to exist, but, you know, they'll give our dwarves a little bit of happy thoughts if they're well constructed. So that's okay. And now, so furniture, bed, bloom, bloom. Oh, I still only have one bed right now, but all right, we'll put the one down there and then we'll designate this a, a barracks or a dormitory. And then we'll... Uh, do the rest afterwards. Does it not have a multi-mode on? No multi-mode for the dormitories, huh? All right. Except. Okay. Oh, season one was annoying too. Oh. I liked all Picard, although kind of jarring catching up some of the relationships that have developed in the 20th years before Picard starts. Huh. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it at some point. I have no doubt. I just, every time I like think about it, I'm like, oh, I'm more in the mood to watch something else instead. I'm behind on a lot of shows. Okay, so our ramp is in place. So let's go and construct a floor over here to properly seal this in. Uh, construct floor. We want to select material for this one because, ah, oh, dang, still waiting on those blocks. I mean, we're using some up, admittedly, but I'm used to like just having access to dozens and dozens and dozens of blocks at any given time. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't watched Strange New Worlds yet. Yeah, I know that's really due. I don't watch the first season of Star Trek Discovery. I did enjoy it a bit. Assuming you like, if someone could give me an edit of season one of Discovery that didn't have any of the parts of the Klingons in it, it would be like top tier Star Trek content. <sighs> all the bits with those like weird ass Klingons did not work for me at all. So before I go and dig this out, like, because I'm going to want to build a bridge. I'm going to want a bunch of blocks for the bridge. So we're, I think we're going to let a lot of these jobs just sort of catch up over here. All right, more of the beds are being made. Oh, yeah, we can go back to use closest material because we don't care about for the beds. The only time I care about the materials is when I'm doing construction because I want to use the blocks instead of, uh, you know, random old logs or blocks or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, the retcon design of season two? Interesting. Oh yeah, lower decks I haven't seen. That's tied into Discovery, right? I think. Like some of those characters or something like that. Or maybe I'm getting completely confused with something else. 
All right. Oh, oh, right. I forgot. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna save here. See, cause we, we got a migrant wave and we didn't know about it, which is stupid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save and return to the title. Um, and I'm gonna reload it because I have now updated my announcement file. I, I grabbed my announcement file from uh, from my gist, which I just realized is not in the what game. So let me drop a link. Uh, boom, 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 boom. And if Essentia is listening and can add it to the what game, I'm sure people will appreciate that. Okay, so now I'm gonna reload this. Thanks, Essentia. <laughs> so we're back to our announcement file, which will give us a pop-up when we get, uh, I guess active save, when we get a migration wave or when we get a strange mood. There we go. So now, yeah, next time we get migrants, we get a pop-up for it, which is good, because I want an acknowledgement. Uh, bookkeeper, some fighting, uh-huh. Yeah, hunting and fighting, hopefully that's all good. Okay, uh, oh, let's check on our farms. Oh, I don't have any seeds, do I? Ah! Why don't I have any seeds? Did I not tell us to gather a bunch of plants already? I'm pretty sure I did. Hmm. Anyway, we got a bunch of people. And we do need to kickstart our above ground farming. Um, I think priority zones only have the same type of job, so that doesn't actually change anything. But I'm going to tell them to go ahead and... Go and gather, like, all the plants in the map. Boom. Hi. I guess this, there's so many store items. because Oh, because we're, we're spawning boxes now, so they're reorganizing stuff. That is why I think that's happening. There's some brewing going on, which is good. Brewing should also give us seeds. I'm a little confused. Because I would have thought we'd have seeds by now. So that we could plant them. I do uh, wish we could customize this. I think I mentioned it last time we streamed. It'd be nice to put a little placeholder there for like block counts or other things like that. That I don't want to have to go all into the stocks. I'm just going to assume we're probably okay. I don't know. Uh, at this point, hopefully. There you go. No, we still only have two microcline blocks. Why is that? But why? What's happening at our, uh... uh you're making the thrones and things like that. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess that's fair. There's other jobs in the queue. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pout anyway. Yeah, so, so does someone ask favorite episode of Buffy? That isn't one more fulfilling? Or was that? Oh, I missed the message already. Oh, there it is. Uh, I'd scroll back more. Speaking of shows, what's your favorite Buffy episode and why is it not once more fulfilling? So that's so really hard to say. I mean, first of all, it's really hard to ever give like a one definitive favorite of anything, right? Like you can do sort of a fuzzy, like top five ish kind of thing, maybe, and get a bit of a vibe there. But then also remembering the entire pool of everything that exists pretty good is, is huge. I mean, once more of a feeling is obviously a, a it is a stupendous episode, um, you know, and there's other like episodes where you're like, oh, this is an excellent episode. It, that's sometimes different from my from a favorite, right? Like hush is an unbelievably good episode of Buffy. But is it a favorite in that? If I see it come up, you know, randomly on TV, am I like filled with exuberant joy compared to other things? I don't know. <clears throat> oh yeah. Uh, um, is that Doppelgangland? Yeah, Doppelgangland was pretty good. Yeah. With with a vampy willow, that's excellent. Sorry, I don't want to don't want to put in too many spoilers for things. 
I mean, like another ex excellent, excellent episode with let's no one, no one respond with anything that's spoilery for anyone who hasn't been there, because there's certain things. If you haven't seen it, it's so amazing to go in blind with. But like the body again, isn't it? Is that like a favorite episode? Is it one of the best episodes? Yes. Mm hmm. Do 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 do. Uh, School Hard. All right, what is that? Season two, episode three. Uh, the introduction of uh, Spike and Drusilla. That's got to be a favorite. All right, so people should be there. We go gathering plants. Good. A little bit of hunting going on. That's fine, too. Ideally, I would like to specialize some hunters because then they'll actually develop some skill. And now that we've got some extra people, maybe now is the time to do that. Actually, let's turn off hunting for these guys. So Erush over here is just a peasant. Peasants, as far as I know, have no particularly impressive skills whatsoever, because um, otherwise they would get an auto title. So I'm going to make Erush here a hunter and I might tell them to just like do that all the time. Hyper focus on hunting constantly, please do that nonstop. That's going to be great. Um, I'm going to leave other people semi unassigned for now. I'm going to explicitly take uh, fishing off here because, yeah, we don't have any fishing until we open up the caravan, the cavern. So we can just remove this and that way don't get distracted by things in the list. Um, I'm going to put in for woodcutters. I'm going to throw a second oops, a second person on there, assuming we have an extra axe. We'll throw Dotton in on this as well. And then Dotton will also be added to the carpenter list. Okay. Probably get a masonry thing. Well, I've got the uh, the stone carvers list over here, which is interesting. We have someone else who's got who came in with a mason title, but they actually don't do stone carving. Hmm. Presumably they just do masonry, which is really what the old construction job used to be. No sushi yet. Ugh. They don't even have to cook the fish. It's taking so long. Okay, I think that's the bed job done. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna have 10 beds for 13 dwarves, which is fine. It's dormitory, they can hot bunk it. I mean, this is this is enough bed for like 30, 40 dwarves probably to be perfectly fine. Um, we do check the stocks. Don't show again. Um, blocks over here. How can we get? Oh, that's right. Um, the block job, we don't actually put any kind of limiter on it. We make, we allow blocks made out of anything, which is probably gonna be fine. I don't know, I might change it to prefer to, to just do microcline explicitly. But in any case, it means we have enough. Uh, select. Roof. Microcline blocks. Oh, wow. I thought, I thought I was seeing that we had enough. All right, fine. You know what? I don't actually care about the color of this roof so much. You can use a mix of different materials. We will basically never see it. We can always fix it later, but that'll be sealed in. The reason I want it sealed in is because if we do hunting right now, any garbage that gets left over here isn't getting hauled away. Any refuse isn't being hauled away because our default orders is to not haul refuse that's outside. We could change it to allow hauling refuse from outside, but then that creates a bunch of extra dummy work that we don't care about. So I want this to be considered indoors so that it gets cleaned out. But I do want, I like to build it on the surface because A, the hunter is obviously mostly going to be hunting on the surface. Um, and then we can just use a fortification here to, to vent. It's just an arrow slit. So it vents any miasma from rotting meat and things and keeps it out of the rest of our fortress, which I'm usually pretty happy about that. Sometimes if I'm building into the side of the mountain, then I'll, I'll build the, um, the butcher shop sort of on the edge here and then just carve a fortification in. But I like my little um, butchering hut. There might be some more some animals that need pasturing right now. I don't even have a pasture set up at all. And to be honest, like we don't have much space here, although I suppose I should probably pasture. Um, um, cook camel man nacho. Because otherwise he'll they'll, they'll be too dumb. They'll starve to death. I really don't like the animal things in a uh, indoor fortress, especially without DF hack to like make this interface a lot more convenient because I want to be able to filter this by 
unpenned grazing animals. Why that's not in vanilla, I don't know. But the horse, the camel, I think that's it, actually. I don't think any migrants brought anything else that have to be grazing. The birds don't. Actually, a pet boar is here. That's interesting. I'm, I'm hoping the... This Actually, this is a pig. Er, no, it's a, it is a boar. But I wonder if the boars work like pigs and that they don't need um, grazing. I'm going to guess that's probably the case. But let's go and get that going on anyway. Try to prevent Cool Man from dying. Ba, ba, ba. Some of the seeds that got spit out into the eating chair got collected. Maybe they're visible. Oh, yeah, we can go and take a look now. Yeah, oh, there are definitely some seeds on the ground over here now. So. They might be eating. They might be plump helmet seeds. Maybe, maybe for whatever reason, the dwarves might be preferentially eating our plump helmets first. We take a look at our. What category would this be under? If we could look at our seeds. Hey, no. Cabbage. Celery. Is the ground wrong? Can I not plant on silty loam? The plant showed up in the embassy. Is it is it the ground? I guess what I could do... Is if there's a different biome over here... It might just be stone? I don't know, it says silty loam. Wrong biome? Oh, are they biome limited? I could do a dummy little farm over here and see what happens. It's so far from our base that in practice, I don't actually want to farm over here, but I'm just curious as to what happens. I did look at the options for the other seasons. We've, we've done about 30 times now. There's, there's nothing. Hmm. Too high an altitude for cabbages, but my cabbages. So I'm wondering about since we're need we need more stone to make more blocks. I'm thinking about just doing some more dummy mining jobs over here. Well, maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll get ready for the rooms for our hotel guests. Now I don't know if they need to store anything or they just need a bed. I guess I think what I'll do is I'll do the. Um, I'll do the three by one bedrooms for our future in guests. Mostly I'm just doing this to get some more block. Uh, hold on. I need to be able to build doors here. We'll do that and then we'll dig out um, some extra tunnelage. Well, over here, these can be secondary always. They're just too wide instead of three. Even three is kind of overkill, but it looks nice, which is why I do it. So yeah, we're just we're just setting up some dummy mining jobs to get some extra blocks. These this is not going to be a storage room long term. This is going to become our inn. The storage is where uh, this is. This is a temporary little pre fort. The plan is to bridge across here, dig down a little bit, bridge back across the volcano, and then from there dig deeply into the mountain over here for our actual primary base. Although I guess I don't want to be that far away from the volcano because the volcano is where we're going to be doing our our forging. I mean, I suppose I could build a long magma tunnel, but magma flows really slowly, so that might be a little annoying. I don't know. I guess our miners are busy doing other things right now. I could limit you or, you know, maybe just making the mugs. Oh, maybe I should get a, a, a dedicated crafter. Yeah, it's I forgot about doing this. Um, Which one's under a different category, isn't it? 
There you go, stone crafting. Which is really mug making. Technically, maybe some other things from time to time, but mostly this. Um. Interestingly enough, you've got the blacksmith title, so you must have some of those skills, but you are an adequate stone crafter. Um, the miner will stay. Metal crafter. I think I might take Mistum. Put you there, and you do only this. All you do is make mugs or other stone crafts that might come up from time to time. Your job is to do that and become a god tier stone crafter. Yeah. And by, more importantly, setting this to be only select to do this, our mines, miners will no longer do that. Or uh, no one will, will end up doing that. Uh, he's still got this job. I think Merlin will finish this task and then go and do some other things. And hopefully start mining. I could just put the mining on an exclusive job. There's not that much mining to do, though, so I'm not going to put worry about it. Put, you prefer the term muggers? <laughs> Master mug maker is a nice ring. Missed him. Hardly knew him. Oh, gosh. Oh. The seasons do fly by. Fly by. Okay, no one's gone around to do this yet. What are you unhappy about, Mistum? What did you just get a bad thought? I was near a trade depot, it's interesting. Grouchy dwelling upon being caught in the rain. Oh, you're just remembering a bad memory. Ugh. Frickin' dwarves, man. Okay, you know what? I'm getting impatient with the miners. There. Be hyper-focused on mining. Yeah, trade depot right over here. And in theory, we might even have some mugs coming soon. Well, the mugs actually should be coming. Um, what's that under? Goblets? Yes! Okay. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> you should put all your grumpy dwarves in an archery battalion. Call them the crossbows. Oh, that's... I mean, 10 out of 10. I guess I can um, mine out this area now, too. I still don't want to breach quite yet. Although, at this point, it's not like we have any defenses. I suppose I could open this up. Hell, let's do it. We're going to build a bridge here. Now, this one probably won't be set to be retractable or anything. Well, actually, I guess it could it could pull up to the right. The length doesn't matter. Like, doesn't take up more Z-levels or do anything weird like that. So yeah, this one could pull up to the right. I, I, I'm sorry, I think my camera is mirrored from you guys, but to seal this in. So if it, it hangs over this, it can we can seal it this way, which is one of the things we want to be able to do. Okay. Build the bridge, make the elves pay for it. Oh, they'll pay all right. Okay. Do -do. Right, um, farmer over here. Anyway, let me go and get you dedicated farming things. Just because that should mean you go and take care of this for us. Dwarven Adam Smasher is definitely still a thing that exists, yeah. I'm sure we'll have some, some very fun accidents or very intentional behaviors. Ooh, we got some gold over here. Silver and gold on this floor. Nice. Well, I kind of like the idea of Warren. Um, where do we find out our... These are the only civilizations we know about currently. We haven't met anyone else yet. But presumably there are more civilizations around. Apparently one of the tricks to like make sure you meet more people 
um, is you can you can put a single soldier in a squad and have them go to a site and demand a one-time tribute. The, the the place will say no, but it won't be enough to start a war or anything like that, and it'll cause you guys to have like met more neighbors and therefore ensure more trade caravans come. So if you meet elves and humans, it'll make sure you get your trade caravans in spring and summer. I don't think anyone trades in winter. Um, I think with the Masterwork mod that added extra races, there may have been like kobold traders in the winter or something. Still no sushi. Crazy. Hey, there we go. Although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, with the spy caravan from the Tempted Chamber is a welcome sight. Their eyes are alight with the anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft dwarves. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow and meaningless death. I think we're probably going to trade for like a lot of plump helmets or something. What is that black rock here? Oh, it's granite. All right. And yeah, I got my pop ups for the trading as well. The important one is the, the message of when they're leaving. So we'll move goods to from the depot. This this whole screen could still use a whole lot of love. But yeah, let's move our finished goods bins. Because they'll have mugs and potentially other things. That's probably it. Yeah. All right. We'll do those. Hopefully there's not any loose mugs anymore. Yeah, there's some. I don't know if I'm going to ask for anything. Because whatever I ask for will just be more expensive, and there's nothing. I think I think we're fine to just like we'll just be opportunistic buyers. Mostly, I, I really hate the UI and that you can't save it. They want they're gonna want more crowns next year. Yeah, well, whatever. You're getting mugs. Deal with it. All right. So what's our block count getting at? I mean, not specialized, but right now it's fine. Yeah, 28. Okay. Oh, that might be counting blocks in buildings. Is uh, I'm not sure. More migrants have arrived. All right, we're getting busier real fast. Definitely time to carve out our uh, our bigger bigger spot. I guess I could make a little temporary dining room, but I don't want to. No cart for the trade. Wait, did he not? Then they were they not able to cart down here. How can we tell? Would we see the wagon if they had one? Because they should be able to bring a wagon down here unless the hills are a problem. Hmm. Oh, huge lag. Huge lag. Do we have a bird stuck somewhere. It's probably these Kias. Oh, are they stuck in my butcher's room again? I don't see it. That's been a problem in the past. Birds get into the butcher's workshop and then they're like pathfinding goes berserk. Okay, well, we're back now. Oh. Berlin's having a drink. Doesn't the cart need three by three to be able to move, not three by two? Do you think there's not enough of a lead up here? Because carts should be able to descend down these ramps. Perfectly fine. If you need to do a corner, you need to leave a three by three area to make the corner, I think. But I thought they could go down. I don't know. Yeah, just for convenience, I'm just going to go and offer just the bins as a whole. Technically, there's some things in here that aren't mugs, but I don't care that much. We're going to get a filtered stockpile later on. Uh, Boris blocks. Um, I'll get some of these glass gems. I can't remember if a strange mood specifically ever asks for glass. I feel like it might. There was a way to see where the cart could move in OG. Yeah. Shift M. It used to be Shift D. You have to have a Baron to get a trade wagon. What? No. Trade wagons can show up right from the start. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm sure of it. Nope, need a barony now. Oh, 
now. Oh, so as of 050, until you get a Baron wagon zone show up. What about for the other races? Do they care? That's interesting. It's more pigtail seeds. And whenever we do start farming, it's very handy to have a little bit more of this. Let me get some plaster because we're far away from being able to produce anything like that. I think we're fine without the cave wheat. Uh, profit's still pretty high. We're going to bring, get some leather. Although we should be making our own leather, but getting more of it is nice just for some early uh, armor. Um, and then some amount of cloth, although this is silk, which is kind of expensive. There you go, wool's cheaper. If I do this, I wonder if the trader's still going to be happy with this. I don't think there's anything else I need. There you go, you're fine with it. Okay, cool. Let's do that, and no one's requesting any more here. But yeah, uh, it used to be Shift D to show the, the trader path, and it doesn't work. And as far as we know, um, whoever was just bringing it up again recently here, uh, Bunisher. As far as we know, that hotkey does not exist in 050, which is a real shame because it would be great to confirm that a wagon can get over here. But yeah, so I didn't know that because um, I was pretty sure we've had plenty of um, uh, forts where the very first trader arrives and I hadn't realized I'd like bork the pathing and so they weren't able to bring the, the, the wagon. So we actually get a warning for that that comes up. We, um, we might still get a note about that, although it might not be a pop up anymore. Boars, Kias, yeah, we need to hunt all that shit down. Ooh, masterworks. Okay, let's... Where's the roof on this? It is covered here. Good, okay. So if we build our bridge, where's that under... Is this under construction in this game? It is, okay. Right, and it's click and drag. Uh, select material after placement is fine. So you're going to retract this way. Now, I'm pretty sure 10 is the was the length limit before. I hate that you don't get this preview, and I don't know if that's something that's like high on their list of fixing, but I hope it is. Like, if I click all the way over here. Oh, maybe there's no limitation on the length of a bridge anymore. Bridges can be 31 length. Was that the case before? I thought 10 was the it used to be the length limit. It may that may not be true though. But I think I want to bridge here to this limit for the seal. And then um Yeah, so okay, it was telling us we had tons of microcline blocks, but I think it's counting in our stocks, I think it's counting the ones that have already been installed, which is a little bit misleading. Yeah, before it was 10 or 11, yeah. Huh. Because we clearly only have three over here. But if I go into stocks... Microclimb blocks, we have 28. Does that... My work order for blocks has it go until we have 200 of them. But if this is also counting installed, at some point, 200, it's it's not going to produce any more blocks because they'll all have been used for construction. Huh. The unusable blocks might be part of a job at the moment. I don't think we have any bl jobs using blocks, though. Not currently. You have your manager counting accurately? Yeah. I mean, that's the default now, and thank goodness for that. Or the bookkeeper is set to a five. And I mean, yeah, because otherwise we'd be seeing question marks over here. We are having accurate counts on things for sure. Might be worth trying to run a uh, three by X road and edge of that. Yeah, we do tend to do that at some point just to make sure trees don't get in the way. And I'll probably end up doing that over here just to make sure there's no trees. Heck, we could do that now because it's such a short little run. Yeah, I don't know if trade caravans spawn at a random spot on the map all the time. I think they spawn at a random spot that is pathable to your trade depot if possible. So if we got rid of all of the ramps and everything and still had this area accessible, I think they would spawn right here, but I'm not certain. Um, is that under construction roads? Yeah. 
So floors can be built like hangout into space. Roads have to be built on a surface, but they take less material. So what we want to do here is we want to build a road from here to there. And yeah, it only needs seven blocks. Hey, well, we'll make it out of granite because we have exactly that many. So yeah, we'll get that done. Road's also a good reminder of not to put traps there because caravans, um, if you put down traps, the caravans can't walk through those areas or the, the wagons can't walk through those areas. I don't think the blocks are anywhere not accessible. I don't see how that could possibly be the case. I'm open to the, the fact that there might be a tra he has started stolen a copper battle axe. Listen, we just eradicate all birds from Dwarf Fortress, just eliminate them. Box may be reserved for suspended construction. That is that is true, except we don't have any construction right now. I think the only construction going on is this bridge. I think there's literally no other construct. Well, now there's the road, but that's it. This building, this is all done. There's no other construction going on anywhere. Oh, I just remembered seeing the dwarves got this way. Did we set up this? OK, so here I can grow crops. Here I cannot. OK, so that we must be covering two biomes, I guess. And I guess the biome here, maybe it's mountainous biome or something or the ground underneath it. But we cannot. Um, we cannot farm right by our door. OK, so we will do some temporary farming way down over in this corner. I'll pull out a little hotkey for us. Uh, surf farm, but it's far away from our doors and things, so I don't think this is a you know, we're going to have to replace it. But yeah, let's let's grow my cabbages. Cabbages year round. Boom. <laughs> it's sushi. Hooray. I don't know if altitude is actually a thing being too high up. Um, but I guess that's what the biomes are simulated. I don't know if it's a terrain thing as well, either. That ground is silky clay, if that matter. And that might be a difference, although over here it says, no, silty clay loam, what I think is fine. I think that is fine. It must be a biome is the only possibility, but. Ooh, boom, boom. Well, let me go and get my sushi. I guess I should probably pause because something terrible might go on and I'll be right back. All right. Need a cherry emote. Yes, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I'll see what I can do about that. Do 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 do. Cherry, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Some sushi. Was that? That was Fletcher Reed, right? Thank you very much for that. I haven't had some in ages. So heads up, we'll want to keep our Baron safe when we get one, as apparently the title isn't inherited. Don't have a monarch here. Stop sending wagons. Oh. Yeah, we'll have to pick our, our monarch carefully so they don't have open. Damn you. St annoying demands. So we'll have to see about that. And annoyingly, I think when we get the the pop up to pick the Baron, we can't exit from that point. 
until we've picked one. So we can't go back and check people's traits. So we'll kind of have to come and have a plan for who our Baron will be ahead of time. Let's see about nominating someone and having some ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so we got some spicy tuna, tuna sushi here. Spicy salmon, I think, actually. Oh, they sent so much wasabi. Nice. I hate, sometimes you get these and there's just barely enough wasabi. And since, like, this is not real wasabi, right? These days it's all just dyed horseradish mostly. Because actual wasabi is very expensive. Um, which, so this is a lot weaker and it can be hit and miss. Sometimes you get horseradish that's pretty strong, but usually it's hit and miss, so you gotta use more of it. A little dip in the, uh, the soy sauce. Mmm. Mmm, so good. No, we can't escape the diplomacy screen and check the dwarves. Oh, okay, that's good to know. All right, bridge one done. What I think I might do, I'm trying to change the speed controls like I do in another game. I think I'm going to build a couple more stone worker shops so we can uh, punch out some more, some more blocks a little bit faster. And so I have stone carvers. Do stone carvers also make blocks? I think they do. Or is it stone cutting? So masonry is like doing construction like walls and floors. Does anyone remember? Stone cutting might be a generic job for, for blocks. I don't know if it's under carving. If it's a carving job, I'm gonna have to put on some more. Well, see, some of it's different because it used to be called the mason shop and doing building furniture out of stone used to be called masonry. Now they, they change the names. I wonder if the wiki is updated enough to, uh, to tell me. Okay, this is on the current version. Yeah, it can be created at this workshop, yes, but what skill? Stone carvers create stone objects such as statues and furniture, and where stone cutters create stone blocks. Okay, so making blocks is stone cutting, and stone cutting is currently not restricted to anyone. Anyone can cut blocks if they're idle, which is great. That's what I want. It's not a particularly skillful job. Um, there's no quality to it. I think as they get more skill, they get faster. But right now, I'm perfectly fine. Same as I do in RimWorld, I'm perfectly fine with block cutting being um, a miscellaneous sort of idle job if people don't have anything else going on. That's great. Trying to grab another piece of maki here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, there's a lot of wasabi. Woohoo! Oh, that's good. We might be on a microclime. We don't have a restriction on what um, our blocks get made out of. But yeah, we could use some more mining. Maybe I should just carve out another big area, or I'll kind of arbitrarily carve out something that might be a room later. Um, maybe I'll, I'll make this a little smaller. Maybe these could be, these could be like, uh, guild halls for guilds where we want it to be open to the public. Oh, it's the edge of the uh, map, right? I had to be careful about that. I just want these to be the same size. There we go. Well, something like that. Okay. I had a friend who ate a spoonful of wasabi once because she thought it was guacamole. Um, my grandpa did that once. He he thought it was some sort of dip. He took a cracker and just spread a thick layer of wasabi on top and ate it. And you know he didn't. He was like, "Huh, 
that's got some kick to it. <laughs> Otherwise, it didn't really react. No surprised about. <laughs> oh. Okay. A good horseradish. <clears throat> Missed some coal at 314. Huh? Only 314. I don't know what you mean. Someone's bought a 500,000 Scoville hot sauce party. Someone uses pure hot dog. Ooh. I like hot sauce a lot. A lot. I've got some really intense ones. But that, that would be pretty, pretty strong, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, wasabi, like we describe it as sort of like a hot, but it's not not spicy. It's not the same way. And it goes away really fast. But yeah, it tends to go like up your nose and just feels like you're stinging your nose more than anything else. All right, lots of blocks happening. You notice we have some wheelbarrows going on there, too, which is great. I right, can't get accurate block counts, which is disappointing. Now, do I want the bridge going straight across here? I think that's still the plan, although I'm looking now and I'm realizing that straight across maybe a little more awkward than I thought. I don't know, it seems okay. Yeah, blocks, blocks, blocks. Three people making blocks at the same time. Great. Sabi does a good job of clearing passages, all of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's sinus hot. Yeah, if you got a plug nose, good way to solve that. Although, in a sense, hot sauce does as well. It doesn't tend to go up your nose, but it does tend to make your nose run. A little ginger. Cleanse the palate. Mmm. That's something else I could just eat by the jar full. Although, with all the dyes and everything, I suspect it's not good for you. You can get undyed ginger. I don't know why. What the deal with, with the trend with pink ginger? Is there a Japanese ginger that's naturally pink? Otherwise, why are we dyeing our ginger pink? Because this is just dyed pink ginger, which is normally, you know, like pale yellowish. I don't know what that deal is. Oh, I don't know. Look at that. You can actually see the gears over here showing you the hinge. Isn't ginger reddish? I thought it was yellowish, but I mean, it's pinkled. Yeah, but I thought pickled ginger like you can just get plain colored, but it might it might be a uh, depends on where you are. Maybe there's some natural ginger that's kind of pinkish. When pickled young, it's pinkish. Oh, when properly pickled, it turns pink. OK, OK. I like how they're using this over here, which is cool and very convenient. Now, I do have some mechanisms. Um, I guess what I could do, just in case we get something crazy that happens early, is I'm thinking of sealing this. Actually, I'm really now I built this road incorrectly. Because I want to be able to seal us in over here should it's something whiskey occur. And chocolate. It's whiskey and chocolate. I'm going to get rid of this little ramp. Ghost boy, hold on a sec. I'll be right there. Uh, deconstruct. Deconstruct that ramp. Yeah, tear apart that road. Pickled, pink ginger does exist in nature. Young ginger roots have a pink tint that is enhanced by pickling, but chances are the pink ginger in the jar you bought is burnt. Yeah, and that's it. I do know that the, the ginger we buy is dyed, but that explains it. Ghost Boy, thank you very much. Baron is a big responsibility. Your Baron should have the animal trainer skill. Then your trained Baron can train bears to help the bear that load. That was unbearable, Ghost Boy. Thank you. Are you still uh, deconstructing yet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's have another piece. Let's have a little shrimp nigiri. Of course, they leave the tail on. That's another pet peeve of mine. It's like, I know that places leave like the shrimp tail on things because it's like, I don't know, like fresher or more proof of whatever. But like, I'm paying for you. Well, in this case, someone else paid for me to eat this food. But you know, you go to a restaurant or whatever, you order like a pasta dish or whatever, like that, right? with seafood. It's got shrimp in it, except the shrimp still has a tail on. So now you're sort of like rooting around through all the sauce or whatever to try to get the tail off. Yeah, some people eat the tail. Those people are crazy. I don't even like, um, I don't even like soft shelled crab. Bah. 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 Do 
gonna go. That's been torn apart. So I want all this... Yeah, we'll, we'll have to try to come back and make things matchy later on. We'll just burn some of these smaller numbers that we're not going to want for our bridge works anyway. We'll use the rest of the andesite here. And then I'm going to construct a little 2 by 3 bridge, let's say, right here. That we can pull up and seal this in. I'm going to put in a new ramp to seal the top. There we go. Now this I like. This is uh, that fake crab, right? What is it called? The uh, Shrimi or whatever? This stuff is delicious. I mean, it's full of flour and added sugar and stuff. It's like so carby, but... Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Personally, I'd never serve shrimp with a shell on that's not peeling you. Yeah, like, if you're searching, serving, like, whole shrimp as a dish by itself, having the shell on is, like, kind of acceptable to me. But when it's in a dish, like, in a stir fry or in a pasta or in a, like, a gumbo or something, like, no, nah, man, I don't want to deal with the, the shells. Texture things. I, probably the same reason I don't like, uh, you know, nuts in my ice cream. It's a texture thing. I know you can eat the tail, but no, thank you. Um, floor. So yeah, we're just going to go and get this area covered. Yeah, I guess I'll have to use some granite blocks to lock that in. But there you go. Okay, now let's get a lever set up over here. I think we'll have a lever room in our main fort at some point. But we need something for now. Machines? Machines. Lever. Done and done. All right. <laughs> Hope you guys don't mind that I keep eating, but this is really good. And you know, the raw fish probably shouldn't sit around forever. Generally fry my shrimp before putting in things so the shell is nice crispy like chips. Oh, do you deep fry it or just pan fry it and still get that crispness? If we minded, we wouldn't keep selling you food. Well, some people might mind. I mean, we know we can't please everyone all the time, but. And we may have to like just open quarry some more stuff, but we've got some blocks. Actually, we got enough blocks. We can start the next bridge. Uh, okay, construction. Bridge. So this is just going to be a retractable bridge. It's not going to swing to anything. It's just going to vanish when it's gone. Um, oh, did I not click there? Or is this the limit? Is that 31? That might be. So we'll do that, and then I'll probably build some floor over here. And maybe even some wall around it, make it look like it's part of the structure. And I think I might do a bit of a of a corner into here. Yeah, mm, we'll see. Well, let's get this started. Can you have a linker, lever linked to more than one bridge? Absolutely, you can. I wanted two just so that I could sort of pick and choose a little bit what's happening. But in a sense, there's no reason I can't have one lever just seal both ends in. And you know what? I probably just should. For convenience, I don't know. But we'll link you. So this bridge, and then this one here, I'm going to link to this bridge over here. There you go. So if we need to seal this in, we'll do that. How this will look like when we set up a proper sort of lever control room later on, I don't know. I suspect we will, in that case, maybe have one lever 
to seal off the uh, the entry fort, the pre-fort. The endorphin rush. That's why you eat the wasabi. Oh, shit. Yeah, that is too wide. That's not what I wanted at all. You know what? I can probably... Let me use a keyboard input. Okay, that is the length limit. Because I know for sure that I went further this time. Thank you for spotting that I was randomly doing it four wide, which is not what I wanted. <laughs> mm. So, one of the things that had been discussed on the Discord is we could have two parallel bridges. The one that we normally have for the dwarves. When the raid comes, we can retract this one or block it off in some way and then have another bridge next to it that then that route gets opened up. And at the end of that bridge is a pressure plate that retracts the bridge as some sort of like automated trap system. We'll see. We might do that later, but we're not we're not planning on doing any sort of like rush on it. But we might get creative with certain defenses. We'll see. Now, as we know, you don't need anything like this, right? You can just like wall off with one retractable bridge, the entrance to your base, and pretty much be safe from raids and things. But this is gonna be cool. And therefore better. All right, yeah, cabbages are being planted over here. It's inconvenient, but at least it keeps a steady supply of food and going. And then we can make cabbage wine or something. I don't expect cabbage would be a very good material for making wine or beer out of, but... The dwarves, you know what? They're just happy as long as they've got alcohol. Cabbage wine, I love cabbage, but, um, well, in Germany, when we were in Germany, we saw, what, like, sauerkraut juice? Like, cabbage juice? I posted a picture on uh, Twitter when we were when we were there that time. This was, what, four years ago at this point? I was like, what the hell? And then, like, had lots of German people saying, oh, yeah, but it's really, it's very healthy for you. Very healthy. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, okay. I believe you that it's healthy, and yet... Yeah, they drink it as a tonic. I mean, I guess it's a little bit more like, um, it's more of a fermented thing. So it's more like a kombucha almost, right? Yeah, very healthy. But I don't like kombucha. So I probably wouldn't be keen on that. Or kvass? What's kvass? Sauerkraut is delicious. Yeah, I love sauerkraut. Like, give me a big plate of, like, you know, like, Alsatian, like, sausage and sauerkraut. Boom. I'm good. Brussels sprout gin is a thing that exists and it's foul. Yeah, it probably has a lot of that kind of sulfury, like, fart smell to it, right? <clears throat> Boss is fermented bread. Oh! Is it... Is it good good? Is it acquired taste good? Is it always not good, but good for you okay that's done so i think what i'm gonna do now is floor some amount here oh you're not taking a click here because it's inside it's a little annoying okay no access so we'll have to build this before we do more A bit fizzy. Wait. Is 
I have questions. Is fermented bread a drink? Is it a drink made from fermented bread? From fermenting bread? That's not what I expected. Huh. I don't say it sounds like beer, but... Huh. I have a... What? So I have multiple questions all of a sudden. How did we discover, you know, discover magma C? Dwarves fell down. Did they build this floor and have it instantly collapse? Can the bridge not support flooring? I think that's it. I think the bridge can't support doesn't count as a support for an adjacent floor. Which to me makes me think we shouldn't have been allowed to build it in the first place. I wonder if I got confused because there's wall over here. If I attempt to construct a floor here, you know, you'll still let me do it. Oh, that's... Wait, seriously? I'm going to have to click on each one of these? Because this cancel doesn't... Oh my god. I bet you that's what happened. And I think we just lost two dwarves. Holy crap. Now, what I expect, then... Because the floor can sustain itself. So we're going to go and ask for it to be built here against the wall. And I bet you those will be okay. Shit. At first I thought, oh, what the hell? Where the hell are they stealing this stuff from? Are they getting inside the base? Do I still have stuff outside from where our first embark was? Maybe not everything's been hauled in. I don't know how the birds are stealing so much shit. It, it could be that there's just... They haven't been hauled inside yet from where we embarked. The birds are arming themselves, yeah. I don't think I've seen birds over here. I don't think they can go through doors either. So there must be stuff that's on the surface. Because I was like, oh, maybe they're flying through the bridge opening or down the ramp. But I'm like, yeah, but even if they did, I'm not sure they'd be able to steal it from here. I think it might be a stockpile is full kind of thing. Because um, we might be missing some bins and things. Or things are still being hauled or something. Anyway, let's we'll worry about that later. That is uh, that is tragic. So we need um, we need some slabs made. So I think two. Oh, I'll ask for two slabs to be made, and then we'll have to engrave them afterwards. One reason I was hoping we'd have like so many hunters and keep that under control, but mm. all right. So those built. So since we're building floor there anyway. Actually, I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to remove that. <clears throat> and replace it with a wall. But we might have to do this, like, a little strip at a time. To make sure it's always got an adjacent wall support. And yeah, no access there, okay. Wow! I can't believe it allowed us to build such an illegal piece of flooring. Because it tells you when there's no access normally. But here's like, well, we can access this. It'll collapse instantly. But, you know, that's fine.
So I'm going to do a little flat area, and then what we're going to do is we're going to stare down. To level like 64. And then the idea is from here, we'll carve this out, and then we'll have another bridge crossing there. Because it's cool. Not because it's helpful, but because it's cool. Well, let's last my food. Q Krug smashes famous. Ah. I wait to die. I want to die. Yeah. Dwarf Fortress dwarves are actively trying to kill themselves all the time. <clears throat> Krug Smash is a excellent YouTuber. I think he streams as well. Um, but I mostly I've only ever watched, I think, on, on YouTube of Dwarf Fortress. Um, it puts out uh, beautiful drawings as well of everything that happens. Really adds a lot to the story. And actually, um, the Seven Pillars run, which is my favorite run of Dwarf Fortress ever, um, the vibe I was trying to do in there was uh, like, you know, the efforts I was making for some of the role playing was heavily influenced by having just watched some of the, his videos. So huge kudos. Yeah, his edited, I I edited, illustrated DF runs are great. Exactly. I can't imagine the amount of work that, that's involved. Section of the cavern has collapsed. Okay, that must be a message from when we lost our floor right there, right? It's got to be. Yeah, I think I think he sketches and then his his wife colors them in. Which I mean, again, like teamwork, because I was going to say um, it'd be nice to put like a wall around here, but I'm just having a memory of having done a fort where I think the fort had like a big central mountain and maybe another one. And no, it had a mountain slope on one side and I had built a tall tower in the middle of the map. And then I had a bridge going from the mountain to there. And then I put walls alongside the bridge. And I think that was fine because I'd sort of started it on solid ground. But at some point, like we retracted the bridge and like all the walls just collapsed. I don't think that was something streaming. I think that was something I was doing on my own. Um, but then, yeah, all the walls collapsed in a way that I wasn't expecting. I was like, what? Or no, it's because the bridges could only be like 10 tiles long. There was something like that. And then at some point, like, because I think I had multiple bridge spans. Anyway, the whole thing just started collapsing. I was like, why? And yeah, I think it's because just bridges don't provide support, which makes sense because they're temporary. Like what happens when you retract the bridge? It would have been fine once all the, the, the floor had been put in. But yeah, I, it, it, it's legit. OK. Um, construct floor. I'm going to finish this. And then I'm going to do some walling, but I want to make sure I guess I could put two pieces of wall here right now. That would be OK because they would be sustained by the mountain wall or the floor, which should be legal. And at least with the wall, no one's going to be standing on top of the wall. <clears throat> it's beginning a stream by being mostly asleep. Who got to be the original Embark? Oh, there's the one with the uh, the founder names in here. We'll see. Boop, boop, boop. Actually, right now, only the named ones. Oh, that's a good question. Did we lose any of our founders in that? I don't think so. Yeah. So at least we didn't lose any named people in this. Dotten and us. There we go. Have been missing for a week. Yes, well, they are um, they are cooked dwarves now. I wonder if our slabs are done. Oh, I'm wrong about this, right? Yeah, it used to be you'd build the slabs at the stone workers and then you'd engrave them at the craft, but that's not the same thing. Wait, we have three people missing. Okay, Oz, Dotton, and then I'm going to queue up another rock slab because I'd only automated two, and then Limul. Okay, two people in one cabin. Oh, it's one of the pet. Oh. Limul is a pet. Now, probably a pet that belongs to one of these. So I don't think it needs to be immortalized the same way. I mean, I don't think it's, we're going to be haunted by the ghost of the cavy pup. Now, if the owner was still alive, maybe it would become happier if we memorialize it. Now, we're going to need the issue here of the diagonal wall. 
which I find a little annoying because in Dwarf Fortress, dwarves can cut through diagonal gaps as, as opposed to Rimworld which sometimes I get confused about between the two. But I don't think they can build diagonally. They can mine diagonally. But if I ask for a wall to be placed right here, yeah, no access, which is very frustrating. To me, if you can move diagonally, you should be able to build diagonally. So what I have to do is I have to temporarily put a little floor here so that we can build the wall and then tear apart, tear the floor away afterwards, which is more than a little annoying. <clears throat> I don't really need the walls here, but it just, it feels like it's going to be better. It'll just look better to me. We're going to do that. <clears throat> the Outsman's file is not a mod exactly, but it sort of is. I guess I sort of self-modded my game. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to specify. I guess it's a mod. Granite block over there. At least construction's all happening very quickly right now. <clears throat> then once that's up, we remove that floor, and then replace it oh, with a wall. Or, I don't know if we have to remove the floor anymore. I think we used to, because it was one construction per tile. But I have a weird thought that now you can build walls on top of constructed floor? Am I on the, the, the crack? Hey, Quill, pay attention. I'm not on the crack, you can. And I'm pretty sure you didn't used to be able to do that. You don't have to remove the ooze the mat. Oh, it replaces the floor. Okay, I don't care about... It. Saves me a click. I don't give a crap. Then. Matahound! Hey, thanks for the sub. All right, so we've dug down to here. So now we're going to go... Construct. Floor. Like that. And then we're going to bridge out over here. <clears throat> oh, the icon for the constructed wall. Oh, these walls here? Yeah, they do look really nice. So now that we got this, I think we can extend a wall out from here. Um, I don't know if they have to do it in order. I mean, theoretically, like, yeah, attach to this. Because I'm, I'm wondering about walls for, like, railing. Just in case a dwarf gets into fight here, right? If Kia attacks them and they dodge, they could dodge and fall off into the lava. So I am wondering, I would like, I think, to do this. Now, theoretically, if they try to build one of these walls here right away, it won't actually be supported by the bridge, so it'll collapse instantly. So I might have to manually make sure they start from the ends. See, right here, I think you're constructing a wall. Who this? Yeah, Mistum is constructing a wall. Let's see what happens. Yeah, they collapse and then we get some dust again. Yeah. It's really annoying. Especially since now I have to go and like manually undo all these. Because I don't think, again, like this doesn't work. You can use this to remove construction, but I don't know if you can remove pending construction. Oh, you can. Never mind. Okay, that's good. So yeah, I'm going to have to like do this one tile at a time, which doesn't seem like a tremendous amount of fun, but I guess is the way it's going to have to be. Uh, I don't know if I can start it here, so I'll put one here. It does seem like a good idea to prevent our dwarves from being dumb and suiciding themselves off the bridge by dodging a random bird. What is it? So, all right, B, N, L. And then I always want to pick the same material. Oh, that's so annoying. E, N, L. Maybe, you know, this, this might be a, 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 a for later job. I guess as long as I wait for all four bits to get built, then I can do it without re hotkeying everything. At least that's okay. Do it a tiny little bit at a time. All right, you're good here. So now we're going to go and start constructing the bridge. Now, one thing I'm concerned about it's going to be retract. <clears throat> I think, oh, it's long enough, okay. Because if it was short over here, what I was worried about is, let's say it was, it ended up here. 
then I wouldn't be able to reach this wall because if I tried to build a floor here, it would just instantly collapse, probably with a dwarf on top of it, which would then die. If it was short by just one, it'd be fine because the floor would reach that wall. But if it was short by two, I don't know what we did. Well, what I would have done is I would have built out a floor from here first to get it to reach, but looks like I can get there in one go. Uh, I should do the thing, though, where once again, we floor right there out of whatever. I'll use a dummy block since it's going to get replaced, and then I can do, uh, I can get this corner wall piece afterwards. Okay. I mean, things are at least they're starting to look good. <clears throat> the big question mark is going to be, what's going to be the layout of a real fortress? What should that look like? Also, the memorial slabs, I think I might put them here to memorialize the two dwarves that died trying to build this section of flooring. Um, the two bridges are not aligned, but barely so. I sub... I submit that either they should be perfectly aligned because it'll look nice or they shouldn't be aligned at all so that if we retract just one things will still fall into the the, the magma i think in practice we'll probably do both oh you like it adds depth you like the um the most it's like a little perspective over here <clears throat> when a volcano bridge you can't fall down because it's walled off well when we retract the floor things will fall down. What? Oh, wait, could they latch onto the wall and then not fall down? Can things walk horizontally latched against a wall? It, do, it does look like a drop shadow. That is the one thing with not being aligned. It does look like a drop shadow, which is kind of neat. And climb up the walls and climb on top. Yeah, I guess I won't build the wall after all. Because, yeah, they could just use the wall to cross across things. Well, I could roof on top of the wall. So if I roof on top of the wall, then they can't climb up the wall and then walk on the surface. We're going to want to roof this area regardless. My question is, if we retract the bridge, can they latch onto the side and then wait? Which I'm kind of concerned about. Well, let's not worry. We're not going to worry about building the wall right now. I think I am going to align these. Although, again, hold on. If I align them and I do the, let's say I decide to do walls plus a roof, then people that fall off of this could theoretically land on this and maybe survive, land on the on the roof. It's like a permanent bridge. I don't mind there being a kind of a permanent bridge here because people can always already walk from one side of this to the other. So this being a permanent bridge by having a roof is OK. I think I'm going to vote for not aligned. I cancel this construction. And so what I think I'll do is I'll just end up going a little higher up here. So I want... a floor that goes out to here. Is it really going to replace this floor with a granite block as well? Probably waste another piece of material, but I don't care because it's like a dummy material. No, no, well. I suppose it could still land on the other wall, but well, maybe I just won't bother walling it. Oh yeah, no access there. <clears throat> First bridge will not restrict access even when lifted. Don't we need to remove the ramps under the bridge? Oh, I mean, yeah, well, here, what we're going to do is we're going to roof on top of it. Yeah, we're going to have to build, build the roof on top of it to make sure that someone can't just jump down from here onto it. There's no ramp, but theoretically they could still drop on top. So that is 100 percent true. True facts. I don't know if I can. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't work if I clip the corner at all. 
No access here. An herbalist mint. Did you get killed from the wall collapse? When this wall collapsed, did someone die? Oh shit. Ushrir. Alright, well. How come you still have a rock slab job in this? So I asked for two in the workshop. I did add manual one, but then I took it off afterwards. Whatever, I'll ask for another manual one being added in here. Maybe I didn't take it off. Die, they're just missing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think what I'll do is I'll build the temp stair here. So can I, I guess a ramp would have been fine there. Yeah. Presumably that lets you hang there. I mean, not OSHA approved, but... <clears throat> there you go. Build a ramp there. Then we'll be able to climb up to this wall. Lower this area. This stairs give me anxiety. Yeah. You and me both here. Although, I guess if I'm talking about maybe roofing this whole area, then I could have put this somewhere else, but no, this is fine. At least for now. Um, construction. Floor. It's whiskey like and this. chocolate! What do you mean you don't have access? You should be able to ramp from here on top of the roof. Oh, I might be starting in a wrong place. Better old guy! Hey! Oh, hold on. Didn't catch that completely. There you go. Now you'll now you'll reach, and then we can finish some of these uh, other bits after. Um, actually, I guess I can do this part here anyway, right now, or granite. And then yeah, we'll have to wait to finish that until the rest of it is in place. Okay. What was that from Bitter Old Guy? Thank you very much. If this bridge is named in memory of everyone who died building it, its name will be longer than the bridge. God damn. It looks like the dwarves are just, like, jumping off and falling off. If the Death Star didn't need rails, Quill doesn't need rails. That's it. We're off the rails, you guys. Okay, so... You know, we're gonna have to go a little further out, because... If we decide to add walls over here... Like, if I built out the 3x3 three three area here... The wall, and then add a wall here. This wall would technically give a drop-off spot from there, but that's okay. So over here, if I go build construction bridge, uh, pure retract, and you're gonna start here. Ha! Ah! Went to grab my mouse and I accidentally hit the right click. Dang it! Having to like switch from keyboard to mouse all the time. Okay, done. So we'll do that. And then, yeah, we'll just mine out some of this lore and things. But then, yeah, we'll have a retractable bridge right here. Offset sufficiently. There we go. So even if we add a wall on the other bridge, it'll be wall on top of wall, which all lines up perfectly fine for this drop to be successful. Okay. I like it. Where were you going? We don't need rails. Again, barring a doing a dodge in combat. Wow, there's one really cranky dwarf. Maybe, maybe they were friends with whoever died. That is possible. Hey, Arish. 
Bored, uneasy, grouchy. Nope. Annoyed lack of chairs. Oh, fair enough. We don't have a dining hall, again, which is what this is going to be. But I guess temporarily. I mean, even if it's not a formal dining hall, I could just put some tables and chairs. But I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a door. Well, I'll probably do both of those just because why not? We'll want them for something. Um, but yeah, let's go and make a little a little temporary dining hall in this area. Furniture, table, use closest is fine. Furniture, chair. Just because it'll make them a little happier. Good, and then we'll designate a zone, which is going to be dining hall. From here to here. And accept. Yeah. It's not a convenient place or anything, but that's okay. The more, the worse I make it now, the more it'll be like, yeah, we clearly have to go and replace this later on. Okay, you are almost done with your flooring. Here. Boom. Okay, so right now, this is a cliff. I mean, things could jump down to there and then jump down to there until we get everything else completed. But overall, I'm I'm kind of fine with it. I don't even know if they would do that. Here they can climb. From here they can't climb. They'd actually have to jump down. They could climb from here to there. If I build the overlap, then they're not going to be able to do that anymore. And maybe that'll be the, the thing to do. I'm wondering, can I? I guess I probably can't. If I did build a ramp here. So then we could climb down from here onto this. And again, that clearly will have to be something that gets removed later on, but that seems OK. I'll probably end up putting one at the other end. Well, I guess I can do that now. We got the wall here. Let me go and do that now so we can do some of this construction from the other side. Oh. Yeah, this is the in-game soundtrack. It's excellent. That's one of the things you get with the Steam version. You get this tile set and you get the awesome music. Because otherwise, you can still be playing the free version and have all the features, all the UI that's that's working in this. As long as you're on 0.50, point whatever version we're on now. I'm going to want a military soon. If you build the roof first, any wall below it should be supported. Well, that's interesting. So I've only been building the 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 roof in the three wide area in the middle. Would that count as a roof support or should I do five wide for the roof and then build roof uh, walls underneath it for proper support? I think diagonals work for support, right? Um. Oh, the UI does that sometimes. Oh, it's because I was in the building mode. So the UI got to get a little confused about things. I was like, is it stalled on saving? I'm like, no, wait, I've seen this before where the screen's just not refreshing because I'm because I was in the middle of the construction mode. So it, it doesn't. It's I mean, that's a glitch, but it's from a programming point of view. It's like, oh, I totally see how that happened. OK, so we got that. And actually, we could have gotten to this roof from over here anyway. So I don't need that ramp. But for now, we'll get that in there anyway. So, yeah. So. Well, I guess what I'll do is I'll build the middle strip first and then I'll do like one test wall, which might sacrifice another freaking dwarf. The edge where the roof meets should be enough, and I think so because it's enough for the floor itself. So, yeah, if I go construct floor, I mean, we need a bunch more blocks, but. I attempt to do this. Yeah, we don't have 87. I probably have to catch them. You know what I need to do is I need to lift the restriction on the block making because again, it thinks it's counting all the blocks we have installed as part of its count. So I'm going to lift the restriction. We're just going to make 10 blocks a day forever, um, assuming we have access to enough stone, which we do still have some. Presumably we have enough for this and then we can start mining out the other side. Which. I don't know. What does it look like? We'll do that. We're still ooh, at this point. We're still 
like not deep enough that we can just dig in any direction. So actually, with that in mind, and trim this back. And you know what? Even though it's there's certain line of sight optimization deficiencies and things, I'm gonna go ahead and just dig a three by three. Um, you know what? Maybe I want to dig a little further away from the magma. No, this is fine. We're gonna dig down to level forty two. It's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Or maybe just forty. There you go. Dig down to there. Level forty is where we're gonna start building our fort. So obviously the bridge needs to be built first, but we do have enough material for that. So we'll let that finish, then we can dig out to the other side. It'll continue a source of blocks coming in, although at that point it's pretty far away from our center. But what we can do down at level 40 is then clear the space that will be our actual sort of fortress place. And then we can move all our workshops and everything down there. Level 40. There you go. 42 is better. I think we'll probably end up doing something on 42. But we'll start from 40 because we'll move up and we'll move down at that point. We'll have we'll have some options about where to do. But yeah, level 40. E. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Watch us like breach a cavern doing this. Yeah, there were, oh, oh, these aren't rocks. Well, I mean, they are. Well, they're not rocks They're Yeah, so they're. Jesus Christ, Marie, they're minerals. Um, yeah, they're ore. Now, it let me build the bridge, so we presumably had enough blocks to do that. Yeah, I don't know what we'll use this space for. But let's go and get some digging so we can keep some blocks going for the rest of it. Where did you can be balcony overlooking the dance floor of the tavern? Ooh. Oh, another tavern, yeah. 42, oh, the restaurant at the end of the universe. Yeah, okay. The restaurant at the end of the, at the bottom of the mountain. Oh, I have those slabs I can put down. Uh, is that under furniture? Slab. Oh, that's what's going on. They're not, the slabs were never made. It kept trying to make the job over and over, but it didn't have the rocks for it. That's what was happening. Okay. Makes sense. Probably should have cut up on it sooner. Yeah, I don't know what these are going to be. They may never get used. But I need some stone right now, so I'm making some arbitrary room shapes. These are surprise rooms that'll be useful later. Or not. Came, randomly came up with a stupid idea for a CK3 game. For every event, or really anything, you roll a die to see what you should pick. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, do it because the dice said so. I believe we did that actually once with a character who was arbitrary. We roleplayed being arbitrary by literally rolling a die for the decisions. I still want Paradox to come up with Twitch freaking integration for their games, especially Crusader Kings, where when an event pops up, you Twitch can do a vote on it. Just like how we can vote for like a card in Slate Spire. There's other games we've played with some Twitch integration like that, with like integrated voting. That's what I want. Oh, Hail Lord Arbitrary, yeah. Because that, I mean, it's so natural, right? The other thing that would be nice, um, but see that, that part's really easy. It's, I mean, literally, now, obviously, you're going to want to you're going to want to um, uh, do some some testing with designers to you know think about the implementation, make sure it's being done right. You're going to have to go through debugging stages and things like that. But at its core, we're talking about a feature that's probably an afternoon of work to implement. Right. Um, with, you know, with 
it might be it might have a shitty UI and it might be buggy, but the core idea could be implemented in like an afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm very positive of it because there are libraries that exist to make it very easy to interact with um, with Twitch, although maybe there's licensing things, right? If it's GPL, how do you work with it? Or, or you know, you know, maybe, maybe maybe it's MIT or Apache license. I have no idea. Um, and yeah, now if you're doing it as an overlay, which would be even sweeter, then that's more work. Sure. But just like a little Twitch bot kind of vibe. I mean, there's all sorts of tools to make that really easy, but it might be the sort of thing that, yeah, it's really easy as a as an indie because a if something breaks, it's not as tragic and b you you can use more of these open source tools without worrying about the consequences. So it might not be practical, but you could do it. You could do a, an example, right? You could do a tech demo very easily and very uh, quickly for it uh, for that. You know, just type in vote one, two, three or whatever in chat. To click on whatever it is. It would be great as a Twitch overlay. But then if you want to bring it further, then because a lot of times when we stream CK3, people are always asking what? What lifestyle are you? What are your stats or anything? And it would be cool to have an overlay that people could just mouse over and see those at a glance. Google doesn't even a Twitch integration mod for CK3. It's again quite surprising, although maybe as a mod, it's hard to hook into the event system to read the options and to like force click an option. Because it's really easy to mod, well, any of the Paradox games to... Uh, oh, these are not... Uh, this room's not centered. Oh, well. Um, but that's different, right? That's just their, they have their text database system and blah, 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 blah. Okay, that is here. So now once the mining job on the surface is done, this mining job will begin. Great. And once again, we do have some blocks, which is good. Man, I wonder how much longer we've got until a uh, ghost shows up. Don't think, yeah, CK3 modding might not allow with external tools, which is a whole thing. Um, the Steam Workshop, like, because it wouldn't surprise me if you needed, first of all, you need network access. You might have to run like a, a little EXE or something like that, a little daemon. A lot of things are not like that are not allowed on the Steam Workshop. Well, no, hold on. Kerbal, no, Kerbal is different. RimWorld has Twitch integration as a workshop mod. So clearly Steam Workshop mods do allow the ability to have network access. And RimWorld doesn't natively do networky things. So presumably the developer of like the Twitch chat mod that we've used must have incorporated their own library. I don't know. Huh. Not centered to destroy the fort. Yep. Are these is this more gold? No, Orpiment. I don't know what Orpiment is. I can go for some Orpiment ice cream. Brain working on a way to make this mod now. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Uh, yes, it would be very niche. Um, but some so some games have in integrated this sort of a uh, Twitch stuff because they know that a great way to have a game go viral is to have like people like big streamers stream it, right? Oh, no migrants. How come we traded last year? Maybe we didn't trade enough. Could be the caravan got ambushed. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe Paradox feels like given that they, they do have a good number of players and if they implement something and it's like if it busts the game, Right. So they, they know they have to inf invest a certain amount of time, which is, of course, money to implement these features. And maybe there won't be a game. Maybe it won't encourage enough streamers to stream this thing and go viral. And, you know, it's like, oh, it's funny because we can get you guys to vote on whether I seduce um, Glitter Hoof or whatever. I heard the screams of melting dwarves from mile around. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This sort of fake news is not allowed here. Okay, select material. So I'm going to finish the flooring over here. Oh, we might be low on blocks. No, they're just part. I mean, we are low on blocks, but yeah, we can at least get those and those will build fine without complaint. Crowd control mod lets you mess chat mess with streamers, Mario, Zelda, Dark Souls games. Yeah. I mean, in Kerbal, we have a mod to pull names from Twitch chat um, for things, which actually would be another cool thing, right? If uh, a mod where because we do that already, where when we get a baby in CK3, we name the child after someone in Twitch 
through various means. Again, you could just have a mod that just monitors Twitch chat for chatters, and just every time a new chatter chats, you add that name to a list. And then when a baby gets born, because already it pulls the name from like historical characters or cultural appropriate names, well, you just hook into that function to instead pull from a list of names from Twitch chat. Right? And save save the streamer doing copy and paste and various things. And also, um, like, yeah, you wouldn't, you do it, you, hey, you could do it across the entire game, or maybe you could limit it to just your dynasty. It would be really interesting, right? You're playing as France, you meet some Mongol for the first time, and there's, uh, there's Grumpy Oldie the Mongol. Hey, hey, what? How'd that happen? Let's be real, you don't seduce Glitterhoof, Glitterhoof seduces you. Does lack of bedrooms affect migration? Really? Well, I mean, it would be news to me. Doesn't mean it's not the case, but it would definitely be news to me. I mean, you got a dormitory. Boom, Mubot, King of Spain. Yeah. Okay. Um. So let's go down to level 40. And figure some stuff out. I mean, so the middle of the map, it is nice with the mini-map, it's a little easier to know sort of when you're vaguely in the middle of things now instead of having to do other funky things. I think what I used to do is your embark would be centered on the map, so I would do like, I would designate something right in the middle of the map to try to track it or put our central staircase down there. So we know we have a lot of real estate over in this area. But what does that mean? I don't always want to do things the same way, but on the same t at the same time, sometimes it's like, all right, well, we've sort of figured out a good way to do things. I think middle point's probably, assuming this is middle here, middle of the screen is somewhere here. And then let's look centered-ish. So if we wanted one central staircase in the end, we would do it somewhere right around here. Spiral staircase going around the lava core. Sure, but th uh, this floor here, level 40. I'm, I was thinking of actually, you know, building fort stuff also. What, what is this? I'm actually starting to build rooms and things. Even getting like a smelting shop. We might do a th this floor. It's so... Forts are much more optimal when they're kind of stacked vertically, but I might do like a big fortress floor sort of on one floor over here this time, which might be fun. I don't know. I'm committing to that. Luxury apartments need glass windows to see the magma flow. Occasionally inviters call in. One floor per, per, per profession. I mean, that sort of brings me back to the um, uh, the seven pillars. We did things kind of like that, which is fun. Hey, temporal mouse. Hmm. Important decision because this is going to set like set up a lot. The problem with um, wrapping around the caldera or the, the like the volcano, like the lava tube over here is that there's like basically no buildable uh, space above it. Right. Like there's there's our limit. So we I, I intentionally didn't center my fort on this because I want to increase the chance we get multiple biomes and maybe get flux stone. More grumpy subs. <laughs> grumpy monk. Cool. I mean, I suppose like this staircase here could have been wrapping around and around, but it just, it just adds a lot of walking and doesn't really it does. It's not even that cool exactly. So, yeah, I think. At the very least, like building, maybe building in this general area. And then, yeah, setting up magma forges over here. This could be like workshop floor. 
and then we could go down or up some and put our living floors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that marker as sort of like a hint of maybe that's kind of ish the center of the map. I don't know. Oh, one thing is I might want a long hallway before we get into sort of fort space proper, because this could be something else we could seal off in case invaders do sneak in past the bridge. We could go and put a, a ceiling like a bridge to seal things right over here, which I do kind of like the idea of. Yeah, it doesn't look like, like like Texas just a bit. I think the top you'd sort of need to change. But there is there's a Texan vibe. Well, building vertical between the southeast of the magma. Yeah, maybe. OK, what if. I'm not actually going to mine out these squares as is necessarily. What's the middle of this? Yeah, that is the proper middle. What if we restrict ourselves to about this size for a floor plan? I mean, we don't really even need the outer thing. The thing is, if we're doing this, this central, maybe we want to do from this and go out. But I often do that, right? Most of my fortresses, and which logically makes sense. But we have a central staircase and then we have like hallways that go north, south, east, west out of this. Now, this fourth floor, actually, I don't kind of mind if this is our layout where um, may, oops, maybe what happens here is the um, the orthogonal pieces, these four orthogonal pieces here, here, here and here are um, stockpiles. And then the diagonal corners end up being where we place workshops, although we can also workshop over here. Um, the other thing I could do, and we've done, we've done a layout that's kind of like that before is, oh yeah, I have to have multiple floors to designate stairs, which with the, with the way the new system is, it makes sense. Oops. Right. So we have five staircases. So no matter where a dwarf is, they're never going to be very far from a staircase. Uh, do dwarfs do path congestion? Um, they can bump into each other. So you usually don't want one tile wide hallways. Two is enough, but I always kind of like the look of the threes. And this first floor could be very open concept, high mobility. Just big giant rooms with workshops or stockpiles and whatever. I don't hate it. I like the four workshop four stockpile idea. Yeah, I think I like this. And then, yeah, on the other floors. So we're going to keep these five staircases, but we might go with very different ways of using up the space on each floor after that. And I think I kind of dig this idea. Because, I mean, squares are nice and efficient, but if everything we always build is square based, it starts to look very boring, right? There's a reason I try to even in RimWorld, I, I try to vary it depending on what our run is trying to be. Um, 
but I think that's what I'll do. I'll just try to make and we did something similar to this in the seven pillars game. Each floor sort of has a different innate layout, but we'll keep these five staircases there, which yeah is going to eat some of our frame rate from like vision system and things like that. And maybe we want more walls. But anyway, and then it leaves a little bit of a straight hallway here that we can build a bridge to be able to seal ourselves off if we need to. All right, I'm cool with this. I think I'm cool to unpause. And then, oh yeah, and I, I still think what we might do is run a little thing over here for our magma forges. Oh yeah, let's get this going. Boar cube, boar sphere, boar diamond. I dig this idea, yeah. So F1, F2, good. Actually, let me recenter our F2 view to here. F1, F2, nice. And then the weird F4 here for our cabbages, which we don't have any cabbage seeds right now, but probably because they haven't been consumed or whatever. We are still going to have to find a better long term food thing. <laughs> Corner stairs are only one tile. That's not it. Yeah, that's that's a not a bad point. We could just make them a one tile staircase. I don't know. I'll leave those because if we're just going to stack the floors here right on top, like assuming we have, you know, just one down, something else, one down, something else. The vision thing's not too much. But then maybe for like if we're going deep down, then we can narrow the stairs a little bit and just have them be one by one. We could have five different one by one stairs um, and then there won't be the vision thing for those long trips, but it's probably OK. Uh, you're right. I didn't turn off the cook the seeds, but I thought, well, we're not cooking anything right now. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't cook, so we don't have to worry about any seeds being cooked right now. So yeah, that's already starting to be quite the hike, but the hope is that for most of our dwarves won't have to come up over here once we move downstairs. Oh, and the other thing, well, we, we can we can move things and make do with that. But one of the things I was thinking of doing, which is actually going to work out well, is I want a dumping stockpile from the trade hub to down here. So after we sell, we can just have our dwarves shove everything down a hole and have it land over here. So I'm going to put a well, X marks the spot. Don't build anything in this vague area because we're probably going to want to dump things somewhere around here. We don't know where, but somewhere around there is going to be good. It's going to be a lava fall. People want a lava fall. I don't think it gives your dwarves as many good thoughts. Although, as has been pointed out, dwarves that go under a waterfall will no longer have any negative thoughts. That is true. Hard to argue with that. I might want to, but I don't think I can. I don't have blocks one material yet, which I can do a mix, but I'd, I'd be nice if it was all more granite, but well, if we mine out more over here, we'll get more granite. Does create negative thoughts for others, maybe, but then they can just go down the uh, magma fall as well. You think this is your favorite track? Which one's this one? Expansive Cavern. I know there's one. It's not as ambient. This one's good for ambient. I know that. I think drinking industry. A lot of people love it, but it's much more of a kind of an active banger. Industry's favorite, yeah. I guess what I can do is um, I'll put in different seeds for different seasons. Ooh, potatoes. We have cabbages in there, so. It'd be, I mean, I'm not actually asking for this. Um, it would be interesting as an option of like plant the thing we have the most seeds for. But that's not really sustainable because there's lots of times when like you're consuming different types of seeds for different reasons or 
So this is going to be a heck of a lot of digging. I bet your dwarves are getting pretty good at it, though. Merlin, you're a master miner. Nice. Drinking Industry's new song with vocals, yeah. So I'm, I'm drinking industry, I don't know if it it must come up in here, but I don't know. It's on like it's on the Spotify soundtrack. Cobaltite. Isn't I mean cobalt is blue. I'm sort of surprised that cobalt cobalite isn't blue. Cobaltite. Better dwarf's favorite game is Mastermind. <laughs> Got Cinnabar. I got Quartzite, which is neat, a little purple. So yeah, digging this out is going to be very time consuming. But it's got to be done. And at least we do have a, a little functional pre-base happening here. It's the color of cobalt blood. <laughs> what I'm wondering about is, I'm just going to go and... Uh, Expand the stockpile. So these rooms that we're not using for anything right now. These stockpiles have been pretty full for a pretty long time. Oh, I should probably ask for more wheelbarrows to be made. Oh, damn. Muscle memory. I went JM because that's how you used to be to do the work orders. Uh, wooden wheelbarrow. Yeah, make me 10, because we're going to want a bunch for some extra stockpiles and stuff, too. That's going to be okay. Wish we could mod the music more easily, because there are so many good Simon Swerver, Swerver tracks that didn't make it to the official soundtrack. Huh. Maybe you need an in or something for certain soundtracks, maybe. Excited for new F1 season? I sure am! I watched all of FP1 and FP2 yesterday. FP3 was too early this morning, but I did watch the qualifying. Fingers crossed that we get some really interesting battles up front. And no one just like runs away with things. Yeah, I think we were desperate for more stockpile space. Um, thanks, Windows Security Defender Summary, letting me know that didn't find any threats. We scanned it five times. You scared the crap out of me. Um, see fewer notifications. Recent activity scan results. I don't want that. Do let me know if you find threats or if any files or activities are blocked. Ah, uh, new Windows installs. So many things to turn off. Chuck Opera's full on this season. Yeah. And then we have freaking uh, Alonzo. Like, what? What is going on? I'm happy Aston Martin's going well. I actually thought when Aston Martin, well, when they got the Aston Martin brand, I thought they were in a good position because the previous season they did pretty well. And then and then they were getting Vettel and I was so excited and then none of that worked out. Yeah. Hey, listen, nothing's going on. Yes. It's like um, episode. Oh, God. Episode three of Avatar The Last Airbender. Episode four. Uncle Iroh comes in and disturbs uh, Zuko's meditation. Uh, we have news about the Avatar. What is it? The news is we have no news. Like, or I told you not to disturb me unless you had news about the Avatar. We have news about the Avatar. Oh, what is it? We have no news. I think Iroh is just a troll. I'm on 11. Yeah, I'm on 11 now. This new computer set up for Windows 11. It's like, it's probably been long enough that most of the annoying things have been ironed out, right? Right? Yeah, and then I proceeded to run smack dab into the middle of some annoying things. For example, you may have noticed in this recording that there is a slight black bar to the top and the bottom, right? You see this, like, the black bars? Hang on. I'm looking at the screen where my things are mirrored, so I'm moving the right, wrong hands, but black bar, black bar over here, right? Now, with... Dwarf Fortress, there always was a tiny little bit because I run Dwarf Fortress in windowed mode because the only option, other option is full screen and then like tabbing in and out becomes kind of weird because the whole thing goes away and different stuff like that. Um, but the black bars are more now because I can't get rid of the task bar on the main monitor. In Windows 11, there's no way to not have the task bar on the main monitor, barring enabling auto hide, which for various reasons is inconvenient. The way I always used to run my computer um, with like, so 
since I started streaming, which was probably we were probably in Windows seven back in that day, but seven through ten is I am. I am, Oh, is it doing the thing where it's not refreshing? Yeah, OK, it's probably because I was paused. Oh, it's auto paused. I don't know um, is I would always take the taskbar. So I tell Windows not to put a taskbar on every monitor, just one taskbar. But then I would take it and drag it to my second monitor. And the reason for that is monitor number one. That's where games open by default. And sometimes it's easy to change what monitor it is. Sometimes it's an option you can set. Sometimes what you can do is you can alt enter, go to windowed mode, drag it to another monitor, alt enter, put it back into full screen and have it stay on the second monitor. But lots of games, it doesn't work. So I have to assume that monitor one is just for games. And that's just the way it's going to be. And so, and sometimes a game doesn't work very well for various purposes, for recording, for whatever workflow in a full screen thing. So the only option becomes to run it in windowed mode, especially if it doesn't have support for borderless full screen. For example, Dwarf Fortress here, right? I can run it full screen or I can run it in a window. And when it's in a window, you can't have a window go and overlap the taskbar. So I don't want a taskbar on the primary screen so that my window can be as big as it possibly can. But in Windows 11, you can't do that. You have to have a taskbar on your main monitor. You can have it only on your main monitor or you can have it on both. But you can't have it only on a secondary monitor. Or why? I don't know. I don't know. They also got the they got rid of the ability to like dock it on the sides, which isn't an issue for me, although very annoying for some people. And I can sort of understand from a program if they redid the whole taskbar and how it works and various expectations, I can see how like, well, we have to we have to do things in a very different way for the layout if it can be docked to the sides and like, OK, that's sort of fair. But I, you clearly can support the ability to have a taskbar on only one monitor. Why don't you let us choose which monitor that is? So anyway, that's not currently in there because that's very annoying. So anyway, Push, what it means right now is this window that I'm in can't be quite as tall as it normally is. So we got a little bit more black bar than normal. Oh, human caravan from Mong Core. All right. Huh. Doesn't your recording software allow you to change the size of your recording capture window? Um, yes. I mean, what I could do to get rid of the black bars is I could run this game in an even smaller window to try to keep the 16 by 9 ratio so you don't see the black bars. But then I wouldn't have as much screen real estate to play with either, right? We'd have less on the screen. Everything would be sort of inflated more and it might become a little bit fuzzy from from having the uh, uh, from ha being upscaled from like a 900 by 1040 window being upscaled to fit 980, 1980 by 1920 by 1080 or whatever. So like this currently is the best solution because it doesn't it means no upscaling so that as long if you're watching it actually 1080 it's going to be crisp and I don't know the whole thing's very awkward sauce. Yeah, the black bars are fine. If I hadn't mentioned it, you might not have even noticed, right? But it bothers me. <laughs> Mostly because it's like my my workflow isn't wrong. I don't have a stupid workflow. I think my workflow is very reasonable. And then Windows is like, no. OK, we're starting to get gems. We should start. Um, well, we need a, a specific layout for our workshops if we're going to do gem cutting and then encrusting our mugs with it, as we've known, because we've set it up a few times. So I wouldn't want that set up right now anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So get those over there. Now, Stardock did send me a code for their Start 11 program, which I am running, and I do like it because it lets me return some things that were also bugging me about Windows 11. Windows 11, we didn't have a choice about whether or not um, windows from the same application get grouped or not. I don't want them to be grouped because and I want the text to be there because I want to be able to look at a glance because I usually have two two browser windows per Chrome running, um, especially while streaming. I have one Chrome window that's just the tabs relevant to streaming. And then I have another one that is where I'm, you know, checking up like a like wiki entries or check my email or or, uh, you know, looking up Reddit posts for information about something that we're doing in the game. Um, and I don't want to have to, like, click on the Chrome icon, wait for the two little pop ups to come open, figure out which one of those two I want to click on to bring up the information. I just want to be able to look at the taskbar and be like, OK, I want to click on that one and then do it. So I don't like it when they're grouped and I do want the text. Same thing if I have multiple file explorer windows open and I'm working. It's like so annoying to not be able to quickly tell which of the windows to go back and forth to. OK, again, I'm not going to make any requests. And yeah, they were going to pay extra. Oh, these are humans anyway. They say, oh, they'll pay extra for crowns. But no, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Mm 
I have a 16 by 10 monitor, so Twitch streams are always blackbarred anyway. That is the thing. When I actually first started um, recording originally, my I had one monitor and it was 16 by 10. 16 by 10 is a great aspect ratio for lots of things, but it's not like the standard 16 by 9. And so I ended up getting a second monitor. My secondary monitor was 16 by, or my, my new monitor at the time, which became my primary monitor, was 16 by 9, and that's where I'd host games and do my recordings. And then my other one, the 16 by 10, actually I would turn it vertically and it was very cool. But, um, we, so we can probably mostly just offer everything. The tough thing, okay, the humans coming right before the dwarven one is annoying because I mostly want to do more trade with the, with the dwarves. And if the humans take all my stuff, that's annoying. We grab a couple of ropes. We might not even need that much from them. A snail? Wow. Cage with a snail in it. Donkey, we'll grab some booze. I'll grab a cheap bucket. Buckets are very convenient. Here, we'll take an extra crossbow. That's an expensive pick. Wouldn't mind extra picks so we can get in their minor. Uh, minor. So the large clothing it doesn't fit dwarves. It only fits like humans. I don't think we'll buy the shields. And how much value can I offer? 3,000 dwarf bucks. Uh, these are um, surface seeds. It actually might not be a terrible idea to invest in some. Now we're fine. What I should probably do is, um, especially before winter sets in again, I should probably do another harvest of, uh, of surface plants. I'm going to take all this cloth, though. And you know what? Iron anvils. That's great. Cheaper than steel ones, just as good. I should probably... How much food is this? Okay, we do actually want to make sure we've got plenty of food available because that's yeah and plants over here okay now we're going to do a fairly significant amount of trade with the humans after all because i'm a little bit worried that what if something happens hey we haven't got a strange mood yet this is our second year no strange mood all right you know what i will trade all this uh, we might be able to hold things back, but I'm not sure. Nope. All right, no cheese. All right, a little bit of cheese. Let's see, maybe I'll keep the price in green. There you go. Seems very happy. Not ecstatic, just very happy. Huh. The strange mood being shy is to be expected. Being shy is not a strange mood, though. That's normal, isn't it? We ever try Project... Oh, I've had played Project Zomboid. Not much, but I think I've got some on my YouTube channel. Not much, and it has been a while. A long while, but um, there is some. And yeah, I do intend to revisit it again. Strange moods are falling into the volcano. <laughs> We're all here for the cheese and the salt. Yeah. That sounds about right. Chief Chesra from Mongcorp. It should it feels like it's Mongcorp. It's Mongcorp from Futurama. Okay, that's some hunting and stuff. Wait, some of those are old messages. They get repeated when we reloaded? Hmm. And fix the thing about blasting your IP address in multiplayer. Oh yeah, so that I don't know about. So yeah, it is like, I don't know what they decide to mine. It's like semi-random, the nearest next tile. Which means you get these weird, like, sort of snaky paths through the mining job. Which, I suppose what I could do, and it might not be a terrible idea, I could go and say, listen, okay, number one priority over here. Number two priority. Number three priority. At least then we get like the rooms kind of mined out in some sort of order. Oh, I'll put the stockpiles in the diagonals. And the reason for that is mostly just because if anyone's bringing anything from the surface, we'll have one stockpile a little bit closer. 
start another season motorsport manager from new f1 season i don't know i still wish the um the official f1 manager had been less crappy yeah they can leave we've already traded So, this is going to be the new general stockpile. And we'll expand it to cover some of these other uh, locations afterwards. So, for now, they're just going to be set to accept everything except for corpses, refuse, and stone. We're going to want to filter out goblets and maybe cut gems later on. But for now, they can just, it can start by accepting everything, and that's going to be okay. Oh, migrants. And then you got a mix of barrels and bins and a wheelbarrow. That's going to be okay. Just how many generals you need to store. He has never missed a beat. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sorry, Central, were you having a technical problem? I'm so sorry. It would be nice. I don't want this to be like when I said it would be nice for ESO or easier to play with a laptop trackpad and people replied get a mouse. Oh, what? I want to... Oh. Oh, and then you're talking my screenshot stuff. Ah, we'll catch up later. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, did you set those filters right? Looks... Oh, oh, maybe, maybe I did not. Oh, you're right. I hit the wrong button. Yeah, in different places. Thank you. Because, yeah, it's none for the corpses, but for refuse, I think I just... Actually, it would have worked because I think it was... Um, I think it blanked out all item types. No, I guess there's still some other things, but yeah. So we'll definitely say no to all that, that's for sure. Equal Same thing with the stone, actually. Button. There we go. In fact, if anything, I might be fine with the metal ore, but... I just clicked in the same place all three times, even though it was only relevant for one of them. Do, do, do. Hold my load! Thanks for the sub! Alright. Um. Let's start. The thing with these areas here, so um, those were dug out uh, using the hotkey. So if you uh, if you have the keyboard enabled, what you can do is you can use this cursor to dig. Right? And if you hold shift and you do this, it moves by 10. But it moves by 10, which actually gives you 11 by 11 spaces. Um, it's very convenient to do stuff like that. The one downside with it is that um, your workshops are um, are three by three. So they never fit properly in this whole sort of vibe. Right? We can fit three workshops and then have two gaps left over. But I guess what we can do is we can leave a gap of one in between each one, and it looks like it might be intentional. I would have been happier like, if these were like 12 by 12, because then I could fit a block of 16 workshops, but... So we're going to get ready to have, like, lots of things. So let's say stone workers, we can assume... Oh yeah, that's going to be fine. You know what? You can use closest material. We're going to assume three work stone workers ready to go. Um... I'm going to say we can probably assume three carpenters, because those are pretty common jobs. We need a lot of that as well. And then, you know what? Maybe craft workshops as well. There you go. And yeah, we might actually use quite a lot of this place for stockpiles because we probably don't need this much space for actual workshops because most of them, I'll just have one. But these three are things that like see a lot of heavy demand sometimes. Carpenters may be less so. <laughs> and yeah, that's I was wondering about that, too, with the stone, especially like the crafts works workshop and the stone workers workshop um, do use a lot of stone. So this might actually we might make a little dedicated stone spot for that over there. Yeah. Doesn't even necessarily have to be that big, but we definitely want some and to have the. Uh, wheelbarrows. Stone, stone stockpile is going to be fine. Although I'm still going to want to customize this because I don't want metallic ore. I, or economic stone. Or clay. I just want the other stone. Which is what we're going to use to construct things. And um, and actually, yeah, I really didn't need this many craft workshop because I'm going to want a dedicated area specifically for the mug baking. 
which actually makes me think I'm going to remove the mug making from this general work orders because we're going to do a specific one. And let's get that sorted. So what I want here is I'm going to want a workshop. I'm going to want a dedicated crafts workshop for making mugs. I'm also going to want another one specifically or probably I'm going to set up a pair for jewelry making. Because we're going to want to encrust all these mugs with that. And so we need a dedicated stockpile here. Which is just going to be for finished mugs. Or encrusted mugs. Uh, hold on, not from here. Here I'm going to want stone. They can grab it from there, from wherever if need be, but we'll we'll have some space ready for it. So then those are going to be made into mugs. So this is going to be a finished good stockpile, but this is going to be for plain mugs. Uh, for type, we're going to clear everything except goblets. And then, yeah, everything else can be enabled. That's going to be fine. And then I'm going to make another one over here. This is going to be for encrusted mugs. So it's going to be a finished good stockpile. Uh, we have to turn a bunch of these things off. Uh, encrusted mugs. Actually, I guess I don't even have to put a limiter on this because it doesn't accept from anywhere. So only things we feed into it specifically will end up getting put here. So the, the filter is not even required. Here, I do think I want to take if there's any loose mugs that are just sitting around, they can be taken to this stockpile. Um, ideally, you know, they're not encrusted, but it doesn't actually matter if they end up sitting over there. It's not the end of the world. Da, da, da. OK, and then we're going to make a new stockpile here. Or. Uh, raw gems. Yeah, just rough gems. And then another one. Or cut gems. Like that. And yeah, they can take from everywhere. It's just the encrusted mug one that I don't. Okay, we'll wait for those to get constructed. And then we'll set up our workflow. <clears throat> Let's steal mugs from chests and caverns. Uh, uh, taverns. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because it's not an aggressive take. It's just if there's mugs on the ground, mugs that aren't in a stockpile or aren't in a defined chest. Because this is the default. The stock, this is a normal stockpile behavior. Stockpiles normally have this on. The exception is just this encrusted mug one where we've got it turned off. All right. Java's dig, hunt, store. Mm-hmm. Plant some seeds. We still need to do a little bit better. Yeah, we're getting more and more cranky dwarves. Need to increase their uh, quality of life here. So the general stockpile, I'm going to go and include these other two corners. Almost. And yeah, we'll probably do some more here, but. I was impressed by people who stream this their base is always much more organized than mine. Man, every time someone posts like their base screenshots on Reddit, I'm always like, wow, mine look like ass compared to this. I think it's like the novelty. I mean, this doesn't look like anything, obviously. But it will later. Probably, maybe. At some point, this these stockpiles here will all get trashed. Everything's going to have to get moved into the real fortress. But for now, it's OK. Why are you moving so slow? Are you carrying something heavy? You're hauling schist. I guess there probably wasn't a wheelbarrows available for you or some damn thing. So you're like, oh, what? do I have a lot of stone in these? Yeah, I flagged that wrong. Same thing with the refuse over here. 
So I'd made the same mistake earlier. Okay. Yeah, no one should be hauling any stone into these things right now. The schisty job. Yeah, but someone's got to do it. So yeah, this floor down here, I think is going to be at the very least living quarters. A lot of times I do the living quarters and the dining hall on the same floor because it kind of makes sense to me. We could do our cooking down here as well, actually. Maybe we do something like, um, so big giant dining hall of some description here. And then over here, yeah, we have uh, our various food productions. So we need like room for a kind of a centralized stockpile and then maybe uh, like cooked, like cooked meals and booze goes over here. And then we have our stills and our kitchens. So those are set up to do that. And then other than other than that, what we have is so we'll have our hallway that goes there and then we do. I don't know, like again, your dwarves don't need very big bedrooms, but we could go. We could go with our, our two by three kind of layout kind of vibe here. That's not bad. If we uh, if we were to trim this back. Um, it would give us enough room. Or pair of these and then the hallway that reaches out on this side or what we do is oh yeah like hold on something's wrong here but yes The only downside is this is inherently like unsymmetrical, right? Macros still work? Oh yes, we are gonna make use of macros for sure. I always use them when putting down bedrooms. They don't work for furniture placement um, because every time you place a piece of furniture, the cursor gets reset to the middle of your screen. Um, but they work great for mining designations. So they, they halfway get there. So yeah, we could extend this down here. And actually, let's let's actually make a macro right now. Uh, you do need to turn on the keyboard control in the options to do it. But if I record a macro. And then play this back. Just curious if it's going to fit properly. Oh, my God, it does. Holy cow. I mean, I completely calculated when I set up this whole layout, I did it intentionally knowing that it'd be able to fit um, a proper number of bedrooms in a stack like this. Totally planned. Oh, if we did them 90 degrees. Oh, that's a good point. The other thing we could do um, is Actually, I guess I can do that and that. Does the math still work out? I mean, I already know the answer to that, but I'm asking for you guys. Oh, it does still work out. Well, shit. Okay. Okay. Uh, save um, three by two bedrooms. Oops. Oh, we start from the bottom. Right. Uh, which is a little tricky because then I have to figure out how far is that? Nope. It's one higher than that. Okay. Yeah, does this end up with more wasted space? Well, no, because it's it's not as tall vertically, which is okay.
Uh, so this is nine across. This is 18 bedrooms, which is more than I need for the current population. I'm not connecting these because I don't actually want this mine to start. Um, I want some of it to start. Yeah. Let's do this so we can get these bedrooms dug out anyway. Yeah, so macros are really good. They've been in, they've been built into Dwarf Fortress forever. And yeah, you can save them if you... Uh, so it's Control-R and Control-P and Control-S and Control-L. I mean, you look up the wiki page for the macros uh, to see how they work. And yeah, when you save a macro, which I've just done, and you hit Control-L to load, you get this little menu you can choose. Um, I mean, I only have them one macro because I, you know, lost my whole save, uh, including my macros, uh, which is fine. But... Um, uh, they they save between games, so you can you reuse them, which is great. And yeah, there'll be room in here for something to do, which I am thinking about, like dining hall here, and then maybe like cooking facilities over this way. And then we've got room, you know, maybe even here, but on the outside as well for uh, for fancy bedrooms, or fancy bedrooms can go on a different floor. That's a possibility as well. And then yeah, we can turn our bedroom arrangement here 90 degrees and still have them fit in quite nicely on the outside too but yeah we'll get that oh these yeah these got set to um a higher priority which i guess is okay oh yeah this is all done being dug out anyway so yes that's totally fine okay the way you said which is fine feels like it's not yeah which is fine like no no it's fine uh okay this is the mug shop this shop's job is to make mugs. So we are not going to accept general work orders at all. Um, the order instead is going to be to make rock mugs. Done. And, you know, just just do them forever. Just make mugs all the time forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But it's going to be very special because we are going to uh, require that you only take... Well, I guess you can take from anywhere. We have a convenient stockpile nearby, but yeah, you can take from anywhere. But you are going to give to right there. You're only going to deliver there. So I think if I, I'm assuming if I have no take set at all, it can take from anywhere. But it's going to always deposit its plain mugs over there, which it probably would have anyway, because of proximity. Wouldn't surprise me if we need more space for this. Although what I can do, I mean, we're going to have bins in here, so it's going to be fine. Um... But I can go and paint this little area here. So it's going to be more of that stockpile, just to say. And you accept bins. Yeah, because you can put so many mugs in these bins. So then what we're going to have is this workshop at top. This is going to be a workshop just to cut gems. That's all it's here for. Um, work orders are going to, general work orders are going to be fine because we're not we don't really use them. Uh, so again, uh, in theory, I guess it can take from anywhere. But it's going to put here. Nope. No, sorry, not there. It's going to put here. Those could have been the other way around. It's going to deliver to this cut gem spot, which, again, it probably would have, especially if we don't put under the restrictions, but it's going to be okay. The big thing, probably, and let me... We'll figure out your work order. Well, you can just have cut gems. And... I don't remember if we need to keep raw gems for some reason. But maybe... We'd, I don't remember, again, if Strange Moods ever need Rupt Gems. But let's say we're going to keep 10 Rupt Gems around just arbitrarily. We're going to cut gems unless we have less than 10 rough ones, in which case we'll just stop. But yeah, cut gems forever. And then the big one is this one over here, assuming I'm remembering all this correctly. This thing's job is going to be extremely specific. It's going to be an encrust finished goods with cut gems. 
And the reason we have to do it because we can specify what gems to use, but we can't specify what finished goods, and we only want to be encrusting gems. So we need to specify that you can take from the plain mugs, and you can take this one from the cut gems. So you take from plain mugs, you take from cut gems, and then you place in encrusted mugs. There you go. So we're going to have a stockpile that only has encrusted mugs, which is going to make it just much more easy when we are trying to trade. If we take a box of finished goods that has super high value, we'll be very confident that it only has these encrusted mugs and it doesn't randomly have an artifact in it or crutches that we need to keep for some reason or something like that. Um, so it'll be with great confidence that it'll be easier for us to trade things away. Uh, so yeah, your job is to encrust finished goods and um, you're going you're gonna to do this forever. Yeah, with no restrictions, which means we'll get some cancellation spam. We can sort that out after, but otherwise we're okay. Now, we need to make sure that our gem works are being done by highly skilled people. Because, again, we just went through this, but if I recall correctly, cutting a gem, the skill doesn't really matter. It just affects speed, not quality, but encrusting does. I will make two separate jobs. We might give it to the same person. Gem cutting. Nope. Gem setting. So you already have a task because you're set on general metal craft. Not that it's happening. You're the only person with skill with it. Well, let's go ahead and enable this. Or we could have... Okay, hold on. We'll use Mistum. And I'll use Mistum on both sides of this. There you go. Currently, you will cut and set gems. And you do have the restriction where you only do the thing you're assigned to, which you weren't assigned to anything. I don't know what you were doing. Maybe you were, you were always idling. I don't know. But yeah, now you're always going to be cutting and setting gems. And we do have a bunch of raw gems. I mean, I, I know we have a lot of the specialization. A lot of these, um, they're not set to exclusive tasks right now. There is a few. Um, I was still fine with having the hunting turn all the time because that turned out to be pretty important. Cyber duck. Oh, cyber duck. I should turn off that. I turned on temporarily to force them to go and plant uh, our crops to figure out if that was working. But that can be turned off. The miners, I was happy to have them turn on, although I can probably pull back on that now. I do like the idea of a full-time hunter because we need to keep hunting those Kias and Wargs. Although, man, you are cranky. You keep going out in the, the rain, I think, though. Terrified while in conflict. Really? Oh, also you're bleeding. Oh, shit. Are you actively fighting a badger right now? Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. We have badgers on the map now? This just started. Yeah, one of our dwarves is going to get ripped apart by a badger. Oh, no. This is bringing back memories of like 10 years ago in Ms. Carsonell, who got both her arms ripped off by a badger and went on to survive for like a decade in our fortress and became queen of the entire dwarven civilization. But she got both her arms ripped off by a badger. When did a badger show up? Did I just get, did we get some gift subs? What was that sound? Oh, no, those are bits. No? Yes? Maybe? Refresh. No, I'm not... Hmm. Oh, I'm confused. Shit. Oh, Christ! There's a bunch of badgers! We have no more boars! I mean, apparently male badgers are called boars. We have no more boars. We only have badgers. This is horrible! I'm tempted to just seal everyone inside. Part of me, Badger. What's the old Badger hate? It's not Badger hate, it's Badger fear. Baby, don't fear the Badger. Pretty sure that's how the, uh, the song goes. 
I, I don't know what to do. Is it going to stop being enraged after it's finished killing Erish? Should I try to make a military squad right away to go and wrestle the badger? That seems like a terrible idea. Well, I don't think the boars were attacking us in melee. I don't think the boars were becoming enraged and assaulting us. Okay, one thing I do want to do is I want to make it so that we can seal maybe just this door and be enclosed um, by putting up some walls and stuff over here. Because right now we need to seal both doors to be locked in, which wouldn't make me feel very good. So I want to just get started on a little side project here where I consider this while I consider this. Not dig a channel. You're here to just remove ramps. Yeah, there you go. Right, you can leave that there. That's fine. That's there, and then floor from here to here. Okay, we're going to use mishmash of blocks because at this point, waiting for something else is going to be silly. Oh, I think that's probably a 31 tiles or something over here, too, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't look like 31. I don't know why it stopped there, but that's okay. I don't know what to do about this badger. I, I'm, I'm tempted to YOLO. This is probably a terrible idea, but I think we might need to try to take out the badger, which I realize is going to be a wrestling squad worth of stuff. You know what? Lord Gravewish is going to lead the militia. Um, honestly, the uniform choice doesn't matter currently. We'll put in leather armor because... We'll, we'll change it later. It's going to be fine. But yeah, I'm just going to go and... Oh, some of these recruits had stuff. But we're just going to go and fill in and squad. Oh, this is not going to be good. I mean, there's no weapons for them to grab. Oh my god. This is going to be so bad. It's already so bad. Oh, we don't see the badger anymore. It's probably eating... Wait, did it go? Oh, you're dead. Did it leave? The question is... Oh, no, we got echidnas again. They're going to become... Uh... They're going to become unkillable. Okay. Let me cancel your kill order. And we'll just wait to see if combat restarts. Oh, Mason is fighting. Oh. Where's the badger boar? Why is the combat log here? I don't see the badger boar. Oh, are you just freaking out and having to withdraw? Stand up. Laugh in the face of death. Maybe it's just the... I'm complaining about being miserable. You were terrified. You might not actually be fighting. Can I leave this open in a pause? No, I can't. Of course not. I must withdraw. Well, then withdraw already.
Okay, we're gonna be okay. I mean, except for the one, the one dead dwarf. He's been found dead. Yeah, no kidding. Um, let's run up some rock coffins. Here, I'm gonna ask for just ten to be made. Okay, there's no more conflict. I guess the Badger Boar, who had been engaged with everyone, I guess he's just left. Um, so, you know, maybe we're not going to do any hunting right now. Now, I'm still worried that we're going to... Yeah, there's no one designated to be hunting anymore. I'm still worried that if we're just too close to a Badger Boar, maybe we'll still get attacked. But maybe as long as we're not actually killing anything. Oh, we need logs. And you don't have any cut gems yet, which is fine. Um, maybe if we're not actually hunting them and hurting them, they won't kill us. I don't know if I believe that, because badgers are... They're, they're terrifying. Alright, let's cut about in trees down. Yeah, trap... Okay, yes. A, you're right about traps. Now, with traps, we need to make sure not to block the road. I guess that'll be interesting to see if caravans would actually spawn there. I, I wonder if I fill both sides. Maybe I won't fill both sides. Maybe I'll leave a three tile gap at the top. So I can make, I can order up cage traps, even though I don't have cages yet. All you need is the mechanisms. They won't get, um... oh, too close to the edge. Oh shit, that's as close as it can go. All right. Well, two, that way if anyone just randomly cuts the corner, maybe we'll get them. We do have a lot of uh, bolts we could, um... Unforbid here. Uh, claim a forbidden item. I'm just going to claim everything. I know the meme is everyone, but. Caravan from Bekromothal has arrived. It's a dwarven caravan. Okay. Unloading their goods. Great stuff. Let's move goods over there. We have maybe fewer than we would have liked because we traded a bunch of the humans. I could just trade some raw. Um, some raw gems to them. I'd rather not. Well, maybe I'll send it to here and we'll we'll have that as an option. Our food situation's a lot better than it was before we traded with the humans. So, and then we got three anvils as well, so we might not really need anything from this, but we do want to trade with the dwarves in general because it does affect migration and all that. Just take out the badger. We like fine wine and good food. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah, so the fact that it lets you designate construction over existing construction is actually really convenient. Why are you moving so slowly? Are you carrying a block? Yep, hauling some schist. We would have a stockpile here. Wheelbarrow one. Set that one to two. And then this stone pile here, I'm going to set it to three. Because I did order some extra wheelbarrows being made, so hopefully there's enough. You don't need a wheelbarrow. Broker requested. Looks so much more like Rimworld now. Graphics are nice. Yeah. I mean, I liked a lot of the tile sets that we used before. You know, I mean, I used tile sets because I thought it would be more visually appealing for viewers, but also I enjoyed them myself. Um, you did get a lot. There's a lot of information you could get at a glance with the ASCII. Well, it's not ASCII really, but let's pretend. Um, with the ASCII characters, there was a little more information you could get at a glance than you could get in tile sets, but the tile sets were pretty appealing. Um, but the one for the Steam version here is really nice. A lot more details. All right, trade. So, blocks. Okay, I don't need to grab a little bit more random glass or anything like that. I, you know, wood is super cheap. Let's just grab a little bit of it. Um, cheap ropes. They can be annoying to build, so we'll grab some. Oh, I must not be running the, um, the mod to have uh, in in instruments named after real-life instruments. Which is interesting, because I thought I was still subscribed to it. Maybe you need to enable it. Reindeer, guinea hen, I don't think we're grabbing those animals. These various barrels. Some of them with booze is going to be okay. We'll grab the axe. I'll grab an iron warhammer. 
Now, if I did want to trade everything, yeah, we don't, we don't have to trade everything. I'll be able to pull back on, uh, on the gems. You know, I'm going to grab all those picks. That's going to be fine. Steel mill shirt. That's not a bad price, actually. We'll get some random shoes because we don't have a cloth industry yet. I'd like the steel shield. Well, maybe. Maybe. Because we're a little while... Whoa, those are expensive gloves. We're a little while away from being able to produce our own weapons. Plaster. Simple dye, no. Cups. A little more plaster. I think we're good on anvils now, because we should have embarked with one. We just bought three more. Oh, it's prepared. Okay. Ish. Yeah, I guess I will grab more food. Because it would really be bad to th run out. Okay, various threads and yarn. Very handy. Trap parts. I think we'll skip on the cheese. I think we, we're okay. Oh, I'll grab the splint and some crutches so that we know we've got them in case we... If we set up our hospital... I'll hold off on those. Okay, so if I turn off this gem bin, that's probably not going to be good enough for you. Let me throw a few more of these in here. Trade. Good. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. So we performed some trade, so they're coming home with some amount of profit, which should get our migrants coming in, which is good, as long as they didn't hear about, like, the, the feral badgers that are ravaging the countryside. Yeah, I don't, I think, I, I did think about the, the new craft, because the instrument mod did add new crop, because it's a crop that gets made for making the reed instruments. Um, oh, did we already trade? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I don't need to import. You want leather work, leather, leather, water skins and toys. You know what you're getting? You're getting mugs. Just deal with it. I don't care what you're going to premium a premium for. You're going to get mugs and you're going to like it. They're the best mugs in all the land. Ask for pigs next time. Well, that's true. We could uh, set up our little uh, pig pen. Wouldn't be a terrible idea at all. Okay, so how's the digging here? There we are. Now, I think the bed was a one-time job. Which I guess is okay. So these are going to be 18 bedrooms. So I, I guess I'll put in a make bed... And I'll ask for 18. Now, we keep 10 doors around. I think what I'll do is... Rock door. I will add a, an extra job specifically for 18 more rock jo doors. Uh, rock coffer. And... Rock... Cabinet. And we'll, we'll ask for enough... To... Fill in all these bedrooms. Okay. And I think I'll go and put in a smoothing command now on these rooms over here. So they're going to be nice bedrooms. Great pigs get goats and ride them into battle. <laughs> Feral badgers, really? You're surprised that badgers are upset when you're so rude about them. You're right. This I apologize for my casual racism against badgers. Are all the mugs engraved with badger and effer? Yeah, the Pulp Fiction mugs. Uh, yeah, we don't have any cages, which I suppose we can build wooden cages for now, since we don't have a metal industry yet. Yeah, no migrants. Hopefully after this caravan gets back to the capital, we'll start getting migrants again. Um, wood cage, wooden cage. Now we only have, uh, I think four that we can install, but I will ask for 10 because after they get triggered, they have to get uh, replaced. We'll put in a repeating job for those later, but we might wait until we've got metal for that. I had hoped to get the uh, magma set up this time around. What we can do is we can plan for it. So last time we had a bit of a nasty surprise. Um, I thought we would be fine. Uh, well, actually it was there, but digging this out over here because things are supposed to flow slower in diagonals. 
right? So if we had something like this, we dig this out. And it did catch our dwarf, unfortunately, and burn them. Um, one thing, uh, most people seem online that most of the time this should be okay, but what you might need to do is make sure there's another mining job so that as soon as they do this, they immediately run away to the other mining job as opposed to just standing around dawdling. That may have been part of it. Um, now, if this were a magma sea, what we do to safely access and, and move things out is to do channeling instead, right? But channeling only works if you can channel from above from a safe square. And there is no safe square that we can channel from for the magma tube here, and, unless we go all the way back up to the surface, which is not what we're looking to do. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to take advantage of a funky thing that happens in Dwarf Fortress. And that is going to be that you can dig something out apparently hopefully it still works in the steam version. i believe it does though um from a tile below so let's say this room here this is going to be where we're going to have our workshops and then below it is going to be the magma reservoir this thing is going to fill with magma so that we can um uh so that we can put forges on top of this and then just channel under the forges to get down there but this has got to fill with magma which means what we got to do is pop one of these tiles well apparently what you can do and i've never done this before but, and this isn't gonna be shape we're gonna end up with, but it's gonna be fine. So we need to dig out this little tile here. Well, what you can do is if you're underneath all this, so over here, if we were to um, channel right here, we'd end up with a ramp right there. There's gonna be a ramp. And then we have some sort of hallway, you know, that connects up to our staircase. Why can't I? Oh, I'm on staircase mode. That's not what I meant to be. Okay, ramp, good, then there, okay. So from here, we're gonna channel. So here, there's gonna be a ramp, and then we're gonna have a hallway, and that just leads and connects to our staircase. Well, apparently what can happen is a dwarf can come stand on this ramp here, and on the floor above, they can dig out this tile. They can mine out this tile while standing on the floor below. And you're like, okay, well, that still sounds like they're going to die. But the trick is, this little channel out thing, you can put a bridge on this, and you wanna build a bridge out of magma safe material. And the bridge can be closed, and then, so this is again, it's a little bit exploity in a way, but even though there's a bridge overhead, a dwarf standing right here can still dig out the tile diagonally above it here. And then what's going to happen, the magma's going to flow in here onto the bridge and into our reservoir, whereas our dwarf that's below and was digging diagonally up is going to be perfectly safe. The bridge is gonna contain the magma on the reservoir floor, even though we can somehow magically dig through it diagonally from below. So apparently this is the absolute safest way to, to dig a magma tube like this. Cause yeah, normally I'm used to, you can you do it, you can be a little channel thing and then it's totally okay. Uh, some people say it's a little bit safer if what you do is you smooth the wall first and then you um, engrave a fortification through it. The, the magma might flow even a little bit slower and help you do the runaway. But if we're doing it from below like this, we shouldn't have to worry about it in any way whatsoever. Casually digging underneath some nasty substances, getting some serious Chernobyl vibes here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll have to make sure the dwarves go in naked uh, for authenticity. But yeah, that should get us set up on our magma thing. So again, one level below, what I'll probably do is, yeah, like that, and then, I mean, we can we can sort of prep this. So we know we're gonna have a main hallway here. And what we'll probably do, um, the other thing is, in old school Dwarf Fortress, previous to the 0.50, which is what we're running now, the Steam version, um, workshops had unpassable tiles. So what you do was when you channel down, because your magma forge needs a, a hole to reach the magma, you would line up the magma forge's unpassable tile with the hole, therefore preventing any dumbass dwarves from doing a dodge move and falling into the magma. Now, there's no impassable tiles in the newer version now, so we can't prevent that. But the only other problem is sometimes there are magma crabs that live in the magma, and they could crawl up and then through that hole, which we don't want. So we're gonna wanna put some sort of barrier in here to prevent magma crabs from going through. I wonder if an engraving is gonna be enough. Uh, the trick I saw was to have a, um, let the reservoir fill with lava and then have a bridge right in this tile and just pull the drawbridge up after your reservoir is totally full and it'll stop magma crabs from going, coming in and out um, at that point. But what I don't know is if we'd pre-built like a, a grate, if that would stop magma crabs. 
Or what we could do is we could smooth and put a fortification here. Uh, can magma crabs go through fortifications? Fortifications. At a glance, I don't know. So yeah, we'll we'll check on that before we get to the next one. Um, because then we might want to do this slightly differently. But yeah, and then from here, so the reservoir, if I do this, we know this is 11 by 11. I'll go 12 by 12, so we know we can put like four by four workshops uh, above this. So that's the reservoir floor. And then again, if I bring it down to here, go up. I go 12 by 12. So this would connect up over here, and this is where the workshops are going to go. So that'll be channeled down. And then, yeah, from here, we're just going to get some sort of little access corridor. Like that. But what I want to do is not allow this right now. This area can't be dug. Um, I guess I'll have to be able to get to here in the first place to start digging it. Although, no, I can channel down from one of these tiles. Yeah, from one of these tiles, because I'm going to need a channel here at some point, no matter what. Um, in fact, I'm going to need a channel underneath where each one of these is going to be. So I can specify here, here, here and here, and then we'll want more. But if I do that, these will leave ramps, which means our dwarves will be able to come down here, dig this out, um, and then they'll dig to here, which will connect up to this whole vibe, and that'll get started. But put that down. I will go ahead and open up this. So we'll be ready to go. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't connect the access corridor to your main stairs. Could be some nasty surprises. Yeah, again, in theory, this will never have any magma in it. What we're going to do, let me tell you, is we're going to have a series of doors in this hallway just in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong. Um, and what I could, I guess out of a, an abundance of caution, what I could do here is instead of connecting up to this floor, I can have this come over here and then come up. Because I did confirm magma isn't under pressure. So unless you use pump stacks and things like that, if you don't use pumps, magma never flows upwards. Uh, so if this fills with lava, which it shouldn't, but if it does, it won't come up the stairs and flood the rest of my fortress if I do it this way. So that would be safer than that setup. Uh, what I'm going to do just to have a little visual indicator, I'm going to go ahead and like dig a few levels up over there. But yeah, should all should. Do not open door under penalty of magma. Yeah. And yeah, I, we use both terms because like here it says lava and but you're building magma forges. So if the game itself is going to be inconsistent about what it uses, I will be as well. Because, yeah, it's magma underground lava on the surface. Who decided who decided that bullshit? Who made two words for the exact same sus substance, just depending on where it's physically located? Do we have other words that are like that? I mean, probably because human beings are absolute trash at thinking up of a logic or language in a logical way. It's just humans being stupid. I have no doubt. Yeah, so that's the entrance way. Oh, which we are going to want a, uh, a bridge here that is going to retract in some way to seal things in. I like arbitrarily build a three by three bridge because I think it'll look nice. Oh, and you're going to build it out of Cinnabar. You know what? That's fine. Although it's not blocks. I changed my mind. Cinnabar is a really cool color, though. Once we get some Cinnabar blocks, we'll probably do some things for that. But for now, yeah, I don't care what material. Dacite. Cool. Um, apparently, I went three by four. It, and three by two is all I need. Excuse me. Actually, I think three by one works, but it looks dumb, so I hate it. There. 
Lots of things. A human becomes passenger once placed inside a bus. No, but in that case, they're still a human, right? We are with with magma or lava. I mean, unless it's like one is like lava magma or something like that. But they're like you keep being told, no, it's incorrect. It's no longer this. It's that. I mean, admittedly, by annoying pedants, and maybe we should just ignore them in general. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is valid, but I don't know. Typhoons and hurricanes is an interesting example. Yeah, they're exactly the same thing, but just based on like what ocean they're coming out of or what coast or whatever. And it just becomes because of local regional naming. That's that's kind of legit. I mean, we have examples for phase changes, right? We have water that becomes ice or becomes steam, but it's the exact same chemical, but in a different state. But that's that's a little bit different. Asteroid, meteorite, meteoroid. That, okay, I can buy that one. Yeah, that's that as an example of like, well, that's pretty silly. Like, why can't we just say like an asteroid that it, it, while it's in, in the atmosphere, it's still an asteroid. And while it's on the ground, it's still an asteroid. I can see, I can see that example. Oh, we do that with food. Although that's area of origin. It's a little different. It's not current position. Like it would be, it would be like if if you're drinking the bubbly stuff in France, you call it champagne, and if you take the exact same case and move it somewhere else, you only call it sparkling wine, which is not how it works. How it works is we change the name based on where it was made. That's a little different, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Wooden lumber. I mean, arguably. Is it lumber? Yeah, well, I, I guess in that example, the wooden lumber is almost like comparing a uh, cow with beef. Right? We don't we don't tend to like look at a piece of meat and say, here, do you want some cow? Do you want some cow meat? We said you want some beef. But that has to do with um, like the Normans hanging out in the Angle lands. Same thing with cow and pork. Yeah, it's because of class. Exactly. Because uh, beef and pork are derived from like well, French, like I was gonna say Latin, well Latin via the French. So the the nobility who were all French speaking in England after the Norman conquest would refer to their food as bœuf ou pas, and then but the peasants who were still English and were handling the livestock would talk about their their cows and the, their pigs and chicken for both. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why we don't say uh, in English speaking they don't talk about like poulet for chicken. I don't know why. Maybe not as common of a of a food stuff back in those days. Could be spigots outside versus faucets inside. I think is, is that more of a, a mid low? Are you British? Because over hell in North America, we tend to refer to all of them as taps. Oh, poultry. OK, that's true. Yes, poultry. That's a good point. And I mean, tap is not a correct term for a for a faucet or a spigot. Um, they, they in terms of plumbing, they actually do refer to different things. But yeah, when like you're in your bathroom, you like your hot water tap or cold water tap, it comes out of the tap. It's all taps. Tappity tap, tap, tap. Oh, in Canada, they're taps in the US, they're faucets. Do you use spigots in the US or just faucets for everything? And we, we use we say faucets here as well. It tends to be more colloquial that we just say taps all the time, but we'll also say kitchen faucet, kitchen this. Just faucets, okay. No faucet and spigot. Eh, that's, that's interesting. Why call liquid gas? Because it's short for gasoline. Yeah, that's the thing. Europeans always, you go to the you go to the petrol station, you get gas, and like, well, it's short for gasoline, which is accurate. Whereas petrol is like, oh yeah, we're going for a generic petroleum product. Fill my, fill my car with petrol. Is crude oil fine? Well, it's it's a petroleum product, so I'm asking for petrol, right? So clearly put some crude oil in there. That's what I want. Gas is short for gasoline. I think that's very, very cromulent. <clears throat> do, do, do. And yeah, there's even like in North America, it's we shouldn't paint things with a with a a single brush because there are still a lot of regional differences. I mean, the same thing is true in other countries too. Like the, my, my, one of my favorite things is like that, that thing where you like show an image of a, of a bread product. And then you say like how to start a, a, a war in the UK 
ask ask them what what is this called right a roll versus a bun versus a bap versus other things cob yep for some the reason i hate maths math is short for mathematics you don't pluralize the case yeah Ask them about scones <laughs> and pop and soda. And then if you're in like, um, if you're in the South, oh shit, we got a ghost. Well, I got to stop the stream in a second. Um, if you're in the South, are there still places where Coke is used as a generic thing for, for all sodas? Um, Cause I know that was a thing. Like I, I want a Coke, what kind of Coke? I want a seven up Coke or whatever it is. Uh, growing up me in Northern Ontario, Francophone, Pepsi was our generic word. Generic word. Yeah, it's still totally thing. Okay. See, I didn't know if that had sort of gone gone out of style, um, because growing up, it was that was like with Pepsi. It's like you want a Pepsi? Yeah. What kind of Pepsi? Mm, orange Crush. Yeah, I want an Orange Crush Pepsi. Le Pepsi. Exactement. Do you say pop meaning Coke? We can't be friends. <laughs> Pop is a Midwest thing. Uh, it, we, I, I think, um, I think in uh, in Anglo Canada, at least Ontario, or at least the area I'm in, uh, we tend to use pop for soda. So yeah, there's really interesting graphs that people have done. Like you can, you can get really cool maps about stuff like that. So I get sometimes I get a little bit like Meh, when people are like, oh, it's it's this, not that. And it's like, well, it varies. Like I always say, well, the thing I would always get when I would play uh, Civilization is people would correct my pronunciation of granary. Not granary, it's granary, because you store grain in it. And then I, it's like, well, actually, it's like, I'm not going to say people who say granary are wrong, but don't tell me I'm wrong for saying granary. Pop Shop was the thing. Pop Shop Pop was the best. The, the black cherry Pop Shop Pop, stupendously good. So good. So good. Anyway, we're going to wrap up the stream here. Our next live stream is on Monday, where we're going to continue Dyson Sphere program. Wednesday, maybe more Kerbal? Maybe something else? I don't know. And then next Saturday, if all goes well, we're going to continue this, unless there's something else in my schedule that I'm not aware of. Uh, we shall see. Thanks, everyone who came out. Uh, thanks to everyone who tolerated the, uh, <laughs> the language discussion here at the end, just for funsies, uh, as we were wrapping up. But yeah, I'm excited for Dyson. American pronounce the R and foy. Oh yeah, foyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people all over the world talk about like those those chairs that you put outside the the chaise lounge, which is like, <laughs> I know how they got there, but oof, as someone who like is aware of French, it's like, huh, chaise lounge. Interesting. Okay, cool. Because it's yeah, <laughs> in chaise lounge. Shies means chair, and longe means long. But it's you in Anglophone. Ang, they kept the order, even though the like noun adjective sense should have been the other way around. You should just call it a long chair. It's like lounge. Which lounge? The chaise lounge. Like, wait, no, hold on. That's not how it works. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna wrap it up here. We're gonna go into Radicus for Lux Channel, where I suspect. There's some Among Us happening over there. That's usually what happens on Saturday. Yeah, she is streaming there. So let's uh, let's go and raid their channel. Give her some love. And I'm going to see you guys on Monday for some Dyson. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.